morning, everyone. Welcome in. Music going down pretty low there. Hopefully, you guys uh, sounds good. Here we go. Good morning. You see, we are in China today, doing a long haul. I got a flight lesson this afternoon from 1.30 to 4.30, so this is going to be about an eight-hour block time, so I should be back in time for the landing, hopefully, unless things go completely wrong or for some reason the flight takes a lot shorter than I planned, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to attempt a little bit of a long haul here. Uh, I was thinking of doing a Southwest Airlines flight and then doing the long haul, but I figured, eh, I'll just jump into this and then I don't have to stress out trying to land because about one o'clock I need to get out of here. So. Here we are in Chongqing, China, which is in the Sichuan uh, province, Sichuan province, Sichuan province, oh, I would say it's Sichuan. Uh, not very good with the, uh, very good with the controller and the camera. There is Chongqing. Alright, so we're all the way over here in the new Terminal 3. There we go. I believe this is our plane. Yep, there it is. We're in the Air China Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. Horizon Simulations doing great work on this plane. We got the jetway. I'm going to try something new today, kind of go back to the old school using the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC, uh, see how performance runs with that, um, because FS HUD ATC uses, a, like, really kills the performance because it's got to do all, um, basically fly all the other planes as well. So we're going to see how Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, ATC works. If we have issues with it, then we have issues with it. Um, but I I actually like the traffic injection just FSLTL and then you'll see see what we can get with the um, the uh, with the oh, what you call it with the uh, in-game ATC. A very interesting airport here. I figure out what's going down. Like down here is kind of weird, right? Yeah, that's kind of a weird look. Whoa. You come in here, nice and mottled. Looks like your typical Chinese uh, waiting area. Pretty cool. All right, let's get inside. Let's get this plane started. We got a bunch of stuff to do. As I said, eight hour block time. Flight time's gonna be about seven and a half hours. So hope you're gonna enjoy that. And hopefully everything else is working. You can hear everything. Let's get inside. Still on the co-pilot side, that's fine. I'm looking at my frame rate. Frame rate's in the 30s right now, so we'll see. Um, this isn't probably the best flight to try it on because obviously the US is where I fly a lot and that's where we get the frame rate issues. But I think we do get slightly better frames when we just inject traffic and then use the uh, in-game ATC. All right, let's go to the overhead panel. Battery on. Hydraulic panel set. We have... Uh, the C1 and C2 pump switches off. Demand pump selector is also off. Wiper selector off. Nav light switch on. Logo light switch on. Uh, landing gear lever. Let's see if we can. There we go. Landing gear lever down. Uh, ICAS gear indication is also down right there. Alternate flaps arm switch off. Alternate flaps selector off. I think. Yeah, right there. Collector, alternate flaps, both off. Uh, parking brake set, right there. All right, and let's establish some external power. We'll do APU a little bit later because it takes us a while to get things set up. I'm just trying to remember my camera views. So external power, we do forward one and two. I think we'd actually, let's actually have um, GSX give us the GPU. This is not there right now. I hope, I hope these planes move around. I have it. It's been so long since I've used just the Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC. I use it every now and then just to see how, if it's been upgraded. It really hasn't. But 
I always forget like if other planes move because when we're using FS HUD ATC, all these planes will be moving around and it's really cool, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure why I'm hearing all that airport, all that noise at the airport, what it is. Because I don't have the airport airport ambience on with FS real, realistic. All right, APU switch, we'll wait for that a little bit later. Generators, uh, we'll do that a little bit later. Trim air switches over here, they're both on. We want the pack switches auto. And recirculation fans upper and lower switches on right there. All right, initial pre-flight procedure, IRS selectors on. Status display checked. Now this is where I get confused because I'm, oh, right there, status, never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Ignore what I just said. Uh, circuit breaker status. Now, that's not available on this yet. I don't know if it ever will be. Engine display switch. Uh, GS. Oglair shield. Engine display switch. Okay, right there. Maybe we just want that on. Okay, uh, and then CDU slash heavy, mo heavy mod options and payload. Well, we're already... In here, let's just double check we got the uh, sim brief. My sim brief in, which is going to be the next page. Yep, it is. Okay, uh, we want real time for that. Good, good, good. Weights and balances set from the OFP. We should have 272 passengers. There it is, cargo. I put it in, well, I, I made sure my, I think my flight plan. My flight plan is in pounds because, for some reason, I don't know how to switch uh, this plane from pounds to kilos. So I put everything in just pounds. Uh, cargo matches up. Zero fuel weight matches up. Good. Takeoff weight. Uh, not right there. Uh, 100,723 pounds of fuel. So we are loaded. Okay, whoops, so we want, oh no, we're so good there. Oh no, that's what we wanted, we wanted to go back. So we actually want to check right here, we want to make sure we have our oil quantity and engine indications, everything looks like it should be. All right, overhead panel setup. All right, back to the overhead, flight control surface panel set, that's gonna be right, right there. Tail and wings, normal. Heading reference switch, normal. Primary flight computers disconnect switch is guarded. Electrical panel battery switch on. IFE pass seat switch on. Cabin utility on. APU as required, we're not doing that yet. Uh, generator control switches all on with the off lights illuminated. Left wiper selector off. Towing power lights back up top. That light is off. Flight deck door power switch on. CCR reset switch is guarded, emergency lights covered, passenger oxygen, or ser service interphone off, passenger oxygen illuminated and guarded, window heat panel, backup switch is on, and primary switch is on. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Ram air turbine, light extinguished, hydraulic panel, left engine, right engine, primary pumps are on, they have default lights, uh, C1 and C2 selectors off, fault illuminated, and uh, demand both off and false illuminated passenger signs seat belts indicate uh, we can do auto or we can do on we'll do on uh, lighting panel as needed light controls oh actually this is where we play with our brightnesses and it's so bright I did this flight yesterday I, I just just to check out the plane and it was a lot darker at this time we are not a lot darker but it, Sun was definitely setting. We're at 6.30. Should be taking off around 7 or so. And you can see how bright it is. But again, China has one time zone, so it gets a little wonky sometimes. But we sh we'll make sure to turn up some of this stuff, though. And we can always adjust it later on once it gets darker. Let's see. Lighting ground test selector all the way back up here is going to be normal. CVR test. Not active, but that's what you do. Same with the fire tests and all that. Not active. Uh, engine panel EEC mode are covered. Our switches are normal. Start selectors are normal. 
fuel jettison, fuel to remain switch in. Arm switch off, all lights extinguished, fuel panel, cross feed off, valve, light extinguished, fuel pump switches, left aft pump pressure, light extinguished, AP APU is on. It's not on yet, so that's why it's still there. All right, balance, verify on, and fault lights extinguished. Oh no, it's verify off, and then the on and fault lights are extinguished. Okay. Read, anti-ice panel set, we'll set these to auto. Lighting beacon is off. Okay, I was like, why is that on? Nav is on, logo is on, wing is off, indicator lights, test, we cannot test them, unfortunately. Runway turn off lights, taxi lights, and strobe lights all off. Continuing over on this one, ELT is covered, humid switch on, cargo temp switches as required. Keep those auto. Air conditioning panel, equipment coolant switches auto, recirculation, fan switches on, flight deck temp as required. We'll just turn that down a little bit. Left and right pack switches auto. Trim air switches on, ventilation switch normal. Forward and aft outflow valves auto and landing altitude selector in. Right wiper off. All right. Keep going here. Glare shield now. Gonna be too much. Minimum selector set. FPV switch. We'll put the meters on there since we're in China. Barrel set selector. HPA. And we'll get our local. There's no way it's. Do I have the. Always happens lately. My weather. Why is it not giving me my live weather? Ah. <laughs> it's going to change things outside. Oh, not much, actually. Oh, there we go. I'm going to say. For some reason, the weather keeps defaulting. My weather keeps defaulting to... um To... Uh, clear. Which is not what it would be. Okay, now, I think we have our radios on, and we're not... You can see we're not hearing anything from ATC. Also, because we don't have ground on. The ATC is behind my head. I, I just don't want to show the panel. Uh, back to clearance. Alright, tuned to clearance, but... So our plan is for runway three, but there's like zero wind, so uh, them going the other direction is not a big deal. Uh, I think we'll go with. Oh, I'm gonna say runway three is right next to us, but you, anyway, we're gonna have to go. Pretty decent uh, taxi. I think we'll go runway 20 left. Shorter runway, not that much shorter. I mean, it's only only 600 feet shorter than the other one. But then we don't have to taxi as far. Okay, so again, the problem is the ATC is a little junky. You see our uh, frames, my frames per second are. 25, so I'm not actually gaining a ton. So I'm actually going to turn on self loading cargo, uh, or not self loading cargo, um, the. Uh, what is it? Where is it, too? Why can't I find it? There it is. We'll use FS HUD. We'll use FS HUD and we'll see what the difference is. So I'm at like about 25 frames per second. Let's see if once I do the traffic injection and everything, how much it knocks it down. I'm gonna be very. I, I'm actually more curious to see how it would if it would perform better in the U.S. But the fact that I can't get like proper clearance 
with the it's just very frustrating to me with the uh, in-game ATC all right let's get that traffic injection started again watch the frames crash on us but we'll see how it goes You see, it's a lot, of, like no planes yet injected. My frame rate's gone down. But if you just do FSLTL, it injects a lot of planes, but not much in the way of ATC. Heck yeah. Supposedly injected. I actually got good frame rates right now. I think it's just it's working on injecting all the planes. Yeah, a lot less at the airport. Actually, we'll stick. We'll we'll stick with the. Uh, we'll do a flight here with Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC. We'll kind of just work through the, the jankiness and look forward to Beyond ATC is what I'm really looking forward to. Be sure. All right. I'm kind of indistracted, but we got a little bit of time and long flight. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right, we got our local altimeter set. Not much change. Uh, where are we? Flight directors armed. Auto throttle switches armed. Autopilot disengage bar up. Heading track reference switch as required. Bank limit. Uh, VSFPA reference altitude increment selector. Go a thousand right now. All right, oxygen mask stowed. Reset test switches. This will be over here. Forward panel brightness controls as required. Can't really do anything. With a number of these. All right, let's get the boarding going. This will take a little time. my clock go? Isn't there usually a clock somewhere? Oh. Alright, so we do have 20 minutes or so. Oh no, this is this is real time. That's weird. Oh no. Oh, that's such a coincidence. Okay, so the UTC time 1040, which is 1840 local my local time right now on my computer light like, is 10:41 in the morning my time now which is obviously is an UTC time but just coincidentally my UTC time and my local time are exactly the same weird I, that's why I saw that I'm like wait that's not UTC time check out the sun shine right through there pretty cool yeah you can see there's just a lot more planes but I don't know how much activity there is like I said, we're going to do this flight. We're going to do this flight with Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC. It's been a long time since I've used it. Uh, still have issues getting clearance, IFR clearance. So I can get VFR clearance out of here, but that's not how you would do it in real life. So I find that the in-game ATC tends to work better like VFR, I think. Because it's kind of set up for VFR, which is very weird because you more people are flying airliners. Well, I don't know if more people are, but it's like you have a significant group of people doing airliners. I open your cargo. Okay, there we go. Alright, should be boarding now. Or everyone's already boarded. That was really fast. Like insta boarded. Weird. I just updated uh, self-lane cargo, so I don't know if there's like a 
setting that I... Maybe I'll come... Ah. <laughs> Those paths are always just a little off, aren't they? Alright, let's go like this. Alright, forward panels, air data... Oh, okay, that's where that is. So air data slash at uh, selector is auto. PFD, M, FD, selector is normal. Flight instruments, no V-speed indicator until V-speeds are selected. TCAS off indicator. Auto throttle mode is blank. Yeah, it's gonna be right there. Uh, roll mode and pitch mode are toga. AFDS status is flight director. Landing gear panel. Landing gear lever is down. Alternate gear selector is guarded and auto brake RTO. Integrated standby flight display check. Check no approach mode. Set altimeter. Local verify indications are correct. No flags shown. Yeah. Should be. Looks right. Always interesting. Like you can't even on this. I can't even change the uh, from HPA to uh, inches. Hector Pascal's. All right, aisle and control stand. Speed brake lever down. Reverse thrust levers down. Forward thrust levers closed. Parking brake set. Verify parking brake message on the ICAS. Where am I looking for it? I don't see it. Interesting. Should be there. Not there. Uh, stabilizer cutoff switch is guarded. Uh, where are the stabilizer? Oh, right there. Uh, fuel control switch is cut off. Fuel switch fire warnings extinguished. Alternate flaps arm switch and selectors are off. Captain's audio control panel. Rudder radar set. Inoperable, right there. Uh, transponder. We haven't gotten a code yet. So I'm just going to punch in a code for now. That's. Yeah, let's do 4466. I think once we get VFR, maybe they'll give us something. I don't know. It's Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC, right? But I, I just kind of want to see the performance to see like the difference between. I just feel like there's more planes parked here too, which is kind of cool. They're not moving around though. <laughs> Alright, flap lever is set to agree with actual flap. Should be zero. Glide slope inhibit switch extinguished. There it is. Uh, transponder mode selector standby. RL cancel light extinguished. Floor light switches as required. Right there. Uh, evac command switch covered or guarded. Aisle stand, panel, flood switch, as required, or mid-position. Uh, gotta do that. Oh, I don't really need the flood. I always like to have the... I always like to have the, uh, all the indications lit up. Alright. I figured we were getting too far along here, but we're not, actually. We're kind of dragging. Alright, Zulu, Uniform, Kilo, or Charlie Kilo. In there. Good. Route. Zulu, Uniform, Charlie, Kilo, to Oscar, Mike, Delta Bravo, Dubai. Request our route.
Hey, runway. What do we get for runway? Two zero left. That's our plan right now. Uh, go next page. See our route. Double check that. Cross check it against the sim brief. So, Unrix Bonza or Whiskey one eight zero to Bonza. Whiskey nine one to Idsid. Whiskey three zero to X Ray Foxtrot Alpha. Alpha five eighty one to Sierra Golf Mike. Alpha 599 to uh, Charlie Tango Golf, Bravo 465 to Charlie Echo Alpha, Alpha 791 to Papa Romeo Alpha, Alpha 325 to Kilo Echo, Romeo 462 to Kilo Charlie, Alpha 454 to Passov, Bravo 540 to Mivek, and Papa 574 to Imped, and then we have the Imped 3 arrival for Dubai. Let's go to the departure arrival page and we're going to go. Uh, departure is going to be you. Uh, this one, because we are going the opposite direction. Or 2 1. We'll do that. Execute. And then the arrival page, just in case I am not back in time. Set this up. We'll go ILS 3 0. Hopefully they're not going the wrong direction, or the, unless the winds completely change, actually. Uh, and. Dot. All right, execute. Back in to our knit ref page or our performance page now. Um, zero fuel weight. Double click three five six point six. Cross check set. Reserves uh, ten point one. Almost want to do this on the other page. We'll just move this over here. Why not? All right, ten point one. Fuel reserves. Cost index of 100. It should be at 100. Perfect. All right, thrust limitations. Selected air temperature. I don't have a calculator, so I'd like to just go 50 is a good number. I'll give you a two. And then takeoff, flaps five. We got our speeds. Actually, let's go to the next page. Put our wind in first. Oh, that's cruise wind. What am I looking at? What do we have wind here. Uh, zero at zero degrees at two knots. Okay. And we are set. Mode control panel again. Right up here we want our V speed or our V2 is gonna be 163. <coughs> Runway heading 199. I'll put us up to 18,000. Okay, oxygen test, pre uh, pre flight checklist. Oxygen tested 100%. Flight instruments heading 199, altimeter, flight level 180, parking brake set, fuel control switches cut off. Alright, let's start the APU. I'm 
comes the APU. Need a Chinese sound pack for this flight, right? Air China. Just give me a second ground. Alright, APU on. Double check things. Okay, we got the fuel pump right there is on, so we can disconnect uh ground power. If this interacts, I'm not sure if it does. This GPU. All right, door page. Doors all closed. Seat belts on. Passenger sign seat belts on. Uh, hydraulic pumps on. Left and right demand pump selectors auto. C1 and C2 electric auto. Fuel quantity checked, fuel pumps left, right, and center on. Stab trim set, rudder trim zero, F O M D F, door page, that's all checked, closed and locked. Beacon on, transponder mode selector, transponder. All right, we actually do need to set the trim. I like how it puts what it should be right there. It's really cool. 5.75, 5.75. It's a really fun plane to fly. Really advanced compared to both the, uh, especially to the Boeing 737. Just a lot, lot different. All right, before start checklist, flight deck door closed and locked. Passenger signs on. Mode control panel V2163, heading 199, altitude 180, flight level 180. Takeoff speeds. One five zero one five six one six three CDU preflight completed trim five point seven five units set taxi and takeoff briefing completed beacon on Ooh, that's kind of cool. Start the engines. They actually start them simultaneously, so left and right start switches on. Why are the passengers freaking out right now? I do not know. <laughs> you hear them screaming back there? Actually, you don't. Ah, self loading cargo, you guys can't hear it. Uh, look at that. There you go. They're all freaking out because the the yaw yaw velocity exceed velocity exceedance detected. So I'm gonna say that um, self-loading cargo the update has screwed something up because 
barely doing it. We're taxiing. We're pushing back. Calm down. Alright, let's get those fuel cutoff switches. Okay, if you guys are gonna cry this whole time. Alright, four taxi generators, L1, L2, L R1, R2 on, APU off, engine anti-ice is required, recall, checked. Oops. He has it still off, that's alright. Uh, auto brake, RTO, flight controls. Light controls checked. Captain MFD is on the ND page. Flaps. Five. Reference speed set. Uh, I've got my takeoff page on because I'm pilot flying. Pilot monitoring has the active legs page. Cross check settings, flap settings, thrust reduction, runway, V speeds, all cross checked good. Snap trim set, rudder trim zero, radio panel set, flight deck door closed and locked. Hello. Hi, Captain. The Taxi captain checklist. We're almost ready, so you can take your seats now. No problem. All right, before taxi checklist. Where are we? Lost it. Anti-ice off. Recall checked. Auto brake rejected. Takeoff. Flight controls checked. Ground equipment clear. Alright, let's get our clearance. Let's see if, uh... If... I haven't heard anything. So this is, again, this is the, the drawback of Microsoft Flight Simulator ATCs. You don't hear anyone else. I don't know if anyone else is actually moving out there. So... Chongqing Grounder China 451 Heavy with Charlie request taxi for takeoff departing straight out. I didn't hit anything, did I? Erchina 451 Heavy Taxi 2, hold short of runway 20 left using taxiway Tango 1 Zulu 2 Echo Echo 1 Zero. Contact tower on 118 decimal 2 when ready. Well, it gave me the right uh, runway. That's nice. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 20 left via taxiway Tango 1 Zulu 2 Echo Echo 1 Zero Erchina for 51 Heavy. All right, Tango One, Zulu Two, Echo. There. Okay, I did a very bad job drawing it, but there it is, our route. Tango One, draw it better. All right, Tango One, Zulu Two. Echoes right there, all the way up. How do I move it? There we go. Okay, well, I know where I'm going. <laughs> I've done it before, and it's like weird. I haven't such trouble doing it. All right, so we are cleared for our taxi. Double check. We got taxi lights, runway, turn off lights on. Here we go. Slowly apply power, max 35% and 1. 
I'm sure I'm way over that already. It's not even in percentages <laughs> for the N1. Such a cool plane. Last night when I did this, it was a little bit more overcast. It was just a beautiful sunset. I think it'll still be beautiful. We'll be able to see more of Chongqing as well. It seems like right now, like the frames, I mean, it's just butter. The frames feel like butter right now compared to, because I'm so used to being on the ground at some of these airports and it's just, it's choppy. So I mentioned I mentioned the uh, last stream. Okay, we do have some other planes. They just we don't hear them talking over the radio, which is a little discouraging. Even though I have heard planes talk over the radio before, but they're not talking right now. So beyond ATC cannot come fast enough, if you ask me. As long as uh, as long as the performance is better, like because. If I can get 26 frames, like I'm getting frames right now on the ground, if I can do that most places, um, I'd be very happy because lately, especially in America, it's like we've been flying and landing places and we're always sub 20, even with auto FPS on. And this is, this is actually, it's enjoyable to be moving around the airport right now. You can look around, not choppy, super choppy. We do have some planes coming in. It'd be so cool to be able to hear them. You know, technically, I think. Hey, Matthias. Welcome in. Okay, let's contact Tower. Or tune to Tower, at least. I'm going to be disappointed if they, if I never hear any, um, hear any of the other planes talking. And that's one thing with FS HUD ATC, we get to hear the other planes talking, gain their clearances and everything. Pop open air screen here. Beyond ATC. Tell me some good news, Beyond ATC. How close are you? March 5th, 2024, that was when they fixed their pricing issues they were having. I do follow them on Discord, I think. Much more coming 2024. Oh. It is 2024. Alright, so we're at Chongqing. Chongqing in the Chish Sichuan province of China. For some reason, I thought this one was further north. I must be thinking of a different airport because I have some really good freeware airports for China too. I want to fly in and out of. I could have sworn Chongqing was one of them, but it might have been, must have been some other, more of a northern China, I'll have to look what that was. Flying to Dubai, and then from, I'll probably look and see what Dubai has for long hauls, because my plan is basically on the days, I mean, it's my current plan, it might change. Because I kind of want to do, I still want to do my Southwest flying and stuff, but it's like, maybe I'll do those in the afternoon and the evening. Especially during the summer, once we, I have the house to myself, I have kind of free time to, to stream more. Um, I have my flight lessons, well, I want to start a flight before my flight lesson, and then come back, and it's like, if I do like a six, six, seven hour flight, I should have no problem. That is very loud. Very loud plane going around there. Why is he going around? Oof. I feel like the FSLTL engine sounds are really loud.
again, it would have been cool to hear them on tower frequency say go around. Maybe I don't have the settings set correctly. Whenever I fly out of China, when I'm flying in China, in the sim, I, I, it makes me miss makes me miss my old home in China. So cool. I mean, it's just so different. All right, let's get our everything set up here. Landing lights, turn off lights, strobe light on. We'll put the wing light on as well. And taxi lights can come off since we are no longer taxiing. Let's get our clearance. Okay, before takeoff checklist, flaps five set. Departure briefing, all that other good stuff. That's all set. Let's do, um, I want to put the uh, terrain on mine. We'll put the weather over here. Seems like they have a working weather radar. Well, I don't know if it's on. Maybe I don't have it on. Or just nothing showing up. Okay, uh, got that, 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 the uh, status page. Okay, I think we can call ATC. Chongqing Tower, China, 451 Heavy Ready. For China, straight out Air departure China. at runway 20 left. Air China, 451 Heavy, wind calm, departing straight out approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 20 left. I've never heard the engine sounds like that. Cleared for takeoff runway um, two zero left or Gina four five one heavy. I've never heard the engine sounds like that with uh, when I'm using FS HUD ATC. You think the sounds would be the same because it's just traffic injection and no, oh, but definitely hear the sounds differently. I don't know if I, maybe I just have my speakers turned up more. I can hear more. I don't know. They sound pretty good. Okay, we should have the TCAS on though. Why do we not have that on? There we go. I feel like I missed something on the checkpoint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Transponder mode selector TA or TARA. Well, we have TARA because I don't think we have any uh, bugs with this plane involving the transponder TCAS system. All right, we're clear for takeoff. Caution light for checklist incomplete, no big deal. And we're taking off towards the downtown, which is pretty cool. Careful not to do a tail strike on the takeoff. Landing gear up. Air China 451 Heavy leaving my airspace frequency change approved. I mean, when I look down, when I look down on this area, it just looks like where I live. I mean, everywhere. I didn't live 
in Chongqing. I lived in uh, Hangzhou in uh, you know the Shanghai. Well, not Shanghai, but in the Shanghai area. And this is just what China looks like. It's like a lot of construction, a lot of like blue roofed um, uh, shacks for the construction workers. All the towers. Um, I mean, this looks like. I mean, this looks like Hangzhou. It looks like Shanghai. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this is China. Uh, or at least the big cities. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Chongqing Tower Airbus Bravo 189er, 720 miles south inbound ILS Yankee runway tree approach. I'm trying to figure out why we don't hear anything when we're on the ground, but now we're hearing stuff. Hey, Cosmoscope. Chongqing Tower, Gina, four five one heavy frequency change. I don't want flight following. I want IFR. Chongqing Approach, Air Gina, four five one heavy, is Type Nine or miles south of Chongqing, six thousand five hundred feet. Request flight following. Air Gina, four five one heavy, Chongqing Approach. Squawk zero six six four. It's not even using the right call sign, it's just Airbus. Why are they not climbing? If it was just a little bit later, get all the lights in Chongqing, that'd be cool. Chongqing approach China four five one heavy one four miles south of Chongqing. Request IFR to Dubai, ready to copy. Why are you not climbing? China Express two eight four oh. eight descend and maintain five thousand nine hundred feet. Air China four five one heavy is cleared to Dubai Airport as filed. Squawk zero six six four. You're not going to give me an Air altitude. <laughs> that is the worst clearance. <laughs> What joystick? I am using the uh, Thrustmaster. I got the 16,000. This guy. Radar contact 7,900 feet. T T dot 16,000 M. I think. Uh, you can look in the description. I have all that in there too. All right, radar contact 7,900 feet. Altimeter 29. And and then you can't change it so it actually does Hector Pascal's like the rest of the world. Continue to Unrix following heading 170. Proceed on course. Climb maintain 13,000. Oh, never mind. We're on the. Oops. No, no, no. I'm gonna do that. Actually, he told me to climb and maintain. So I can skip. Like, you follow the star or the SID. Unless they tell you, hey, you're cleared. Proceed on course climb and maintain 13,000 feet air. China 451 heavy. I mean, I like the the voices for the in-game ATC, but it's, it does leave something to be desired, especially the clearance. Getting that, getting the IFR clearance is so so frustrating. I'd have to take off checklist flaps up, landing gear up, checklist complete. Air China four five one heavy, please acknowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Climb and maintain 13,000 feet. Expect flight level tree, 60 air, China 451 heavy. I like how now we're saying it correctly, air, air China. China. Heavy contact. It's like air China, air China, when we're on the ground. Good day. Very weird. Like Chengdu one Center, 120.9. So we should Goodbye. see this switch automatically.
There you go. Chengdu Center Air, China 451. I can't wait until we get beyond ATC because then I'll be able to do on um, beyond ATC what you can kind of do on VATSIM, which is actually do all this manually. And talk. Yep, I. I could have. Yeah, I probably could have done VATSIM today. This summer I'm going to get on VATSIM a lot more often because I'll be at. My wife and uh, son will be in China for the summer. And so I'll have the house to myself. It'll be a little bit. The problem is, like, when I stream, sometimes I'm just trying to cram a stream, and my son's always coming over, distracting me. And my wife wants me to step away and do other stuff. Um, now, to be honest, we wouldn't have a lot of that sim on this flight anyway. Um, but there are times. There are times. Climb and maintain flight level two three zero air China four five one heavy. Chongqing two three seven four descend and maintain twelve thousand feet. Boeing four one nine or climb and maintain thirteen thousand right, feet. That's, let's get those seat belts set to auto. A lot less clouds than yesterday when I did the kind of just took off to just practice with this plane. Still a beautiful sunset. Goodbye, Chongqing. We are headed directly south right now. Yeah, I'm gonna look and see see what kind of flights we have out of Dubai. Problem is, I think this flight returning. It depends on when I start the flight too, because I think this return flight to Chongqing would be. Um, pretty, holy cow, pretty, um, a little bit shorter than this way. Yeah, there's a lot of activity. I, I guess it is Sunday morning. Europe is just covered in planes on Batsim, and then there's a, looks like there's, there must be some event going on, a bunch of planes flying from Dubai up to, uh, Iman Khomeini International in Iran, Tehran. Um, so there must have been an event. Yeah, we'll try to do a little bit, more, a few more of those uh, this summer as well. Get into actual events again. Um, but then on other flights, just jump in. Hey, Pilot VR, you, you, you sub? Cool. Yeah, it should pop up. Eventually, it'll pop up and let me know that. Um, but thanks for the sub. Yeah, doing something a little bit different today. Doing a doing a long haul Descend and maintain 7, feet. Keep speed. Not above I bet you I bet you though we're gonna fly faster than I would than the plan because right now we're at okay we just need to make sure we hopefully the flight does not we don't fly faster than um because I, I want this flight I don't want to land until like 5 30 at the earliest because I won't be home until five, probably. I have my flight lesson, and I'm just watching. I'm watching the estimated time on route above me there. Over, it's actually over, uh, over there, that way. <laughs> uh, on the top, I'm watching it just slowly tick down as we gain altitude. And as it gets closer to six, that's more like five, six hours. It's gonna be like more five thirty my time, which is. Uh, it's like with these long haul flights, it's like it's almost the opposite. I want it to take. It, it's weird. Sometimes it takes so short a time. I always, it always, it always happens to me where it's like I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do a eight hour long haul. I mean, this flight is supposed to take eight hours, or the air time is seven hours thirty minutes. You can already see our air time is the estimated time is six hours thirty minutes. Now, of course, we do have a. A decent, like the the star in, will add time to that. But I mean, just direct to the airport, and even the star is before that. So, ugh. how does it get so far? How does Simbrief, you know, how do the schedules tell me it's going to be one flight time, and then I actually get up and flying? And Air China four five one heavy climb and maintain flight level two nine or zero. Like if I only had a limited amount of time, I want the flight to take a short amount of time. But I kind of want the flight to take. I mean, right now it's at six and a half hours, so we should be six and a half hours will be fine. If it's if it goes to six, six and a half hours, should be fine. Five thirty, six o'clock landing. 
Um, I should be home by five. Yeah, sorry. Climb and maintain flight level 2900 Air China 451 Heavy. Descend and maintain flight level 200 Citron 3706. Citron, Citron. The only problem is because self. So the in game ATC actually, if you don't talk to them, if you don't respond, there is no auto response. With FS HUD ATC, there's auto response, and so it's easy to step away. Whereas the in game ATC is actually not as obviously as good or as strict as VATSIM, but you have to respond. You have to keep a button and say, hey, I acknowledge the instruction or whatever. So if I step away, it's. Cause a little issues there. Right, so I'm not sure. I don't have the. I can already see it happening. I can already see the uh, that time, the flight time is just dropping like a stone. I, it would not, it would not surprise me if this flight only takes us only takes like five hours. But for some reason, Sim Brief is like, yeah, your airtime's gonna be seven and a half hours. And it's like, where's the seven and a half hours coming from? I mean, even the uh, distance to go seems a lot lower. I, I'm trying to figure it out. It's like, am I going to the wrong airport? I mean, even the distance to go is way lower than Sim... I mean, it's like 300, 400 nautical miles l less than... So I don't know what is going on there. Really weird. Hey, Austin. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm really trying to figure it out. Like, why is our flight time becoming less and less and less and we haven't covered that much like as we get our altitude I was planning on it being a seven and a half hour flight and it's looking closer to being a six hour flight <laughs> which means I'm going to be the plane's gonna we're gonna miss the target because I'm gonna be I don't know if I'll be home by the time we should be descending wild but if I if I had made it a like if I had scheduled a 9 or 10 hour uh, long haul flight then I wouldn't finish the flight you know and I had started at 10 o'clock my time I wouldn't have I wouldn't finish the flight until like midnight that's just it, it's is the weird thing I did that I had that long haul last time I did a really long haul was a uh, Like the last time I did a long haul, I did uh, Beijing to JFK, to New York JFK, and I think it was scheduled. I want to say it was. A, it was. A, it was like one. Of, I think it's the longest. It was the longest long haul I could find. Like 747 long haul in the world I could find, and I just wanted to do an overnight flight, but I didn't want it to be too short because it was too short that I wouldn't be awake. And I get up. And it's been 14 hours, I think, since I started the flight. And it was supposed to be like a 15-hour flight. And I'm still four or five hours out. And I'm like, how? <laughs> how do you get... It's like, it... I don't understand because sim brief, when you brief the plan, you're getting the current winds. Now, I get the winds change, but... Now, it's kind of weird. Is now the flight time's starting to climb. So, as we were traveling directly south, I wonder if that's the... 
Maybe that's the Great Circle. It's got to be the Circle Route, right? Because as we were traveling sh directly south from Chongqing, that's that time was going down. We were getting closer. It seemed rapid. But now that we're kind of we're starting to make our turn and we're gonna fly over. Whoa. It's Knox just. It's Knox. Thank you. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. Oh, thanks for the follow. Yeah, now that we're making the turn, we're gonna kind of do this. Kind of show you what our route is. Not the chart up there, I think. Uh, let's go out here. Yeah, so as we were on this just straight down, that flight time was dropping below five or below six hours. Now it's picked up another ten as we start doing this. And I wonder if it's not because obviously this is the longest. I want to say if we want it, if we want a shorter flight, you'd want to fly up still, kind of like this, right? That's why you see those flights. If we were flying from like Beijing to JFK, we'd fly all the way up to the North Pole because if you look on a globe. I think on a globe, this is obviously going to be a longer, more of a straight line. That's weird. This, yeah. Well, we're, we're hanging around six hours now, so six hours should be about 5:30 uh, my time, and hopefully I'll be able to get home, jump in here, make sure we're descending. Once we get to our cruise, I'm going to, I'm going to put the lower altitude so that it hopefully starts descending on its own. Oh, that was you, Como Cosmo. Cool, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, I don't know. Look at that. Seven, I got sunset over there. Woo! -wee. Chengdu Center Air, China 451 Heavy requesting vector to next waypoint. I didn't want that. Air China 451 Heavy, continue to mob returning and following heading 250, proceed on course. Continue to mob returning and following heading 250 resume on navigation air China 451 heavy. Yeah, they don't have very good cameras inside the plane. You can see the, the windows kind of too far up. I don't think I can. Yeah, there's no way for me to adjust. That's interesting, that flight time just kind of keeps popping up and down. And that's the weird thing, you see the distance to go, we're at like 2,700, it's been that the whole time, which is weird too, that it's kind of... Um, our flight plan... Pull that up. Out of the way of that sunset, I don't want to cover that up at all. Beautiful. Uh, you can see our cruise is going to be flight level 361, they're giving us 360, ooh, you see that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So actually I have, um, what is it called? I got the, um, what is that? That's, uh, let me find what that is. That's, um, Good called. evening once again from the cockpit. I hope all is well with you and you're enjoying flying with us so far. We've reached our cruising flight level. We're expecting to arrive on time as planned. Progress is going very well. Unless anything changes in the meantime, you'll next hear from me around the time we start our descent, so I'll leave you in the hands of our excellent cabin crew. 
Thank you. That's uh, you saw those little kind of streaks on there. That's called Saint Elmo's fire. That's like static buildup on a plane. Usually, you're going to get that when you're more in the clouds, thunderstorm kind of area. I'm trying to think where that comes from. There, you can still see it. That's pretty cool. I forgot that. And it, it there's this. Um, you can get it for. It's only for the. Um, I think for the default planes. So the 787, the A320, um, the. Uh, 747. Um, any of your default planes, they've got packs for this. I'm trying to find what it is. It's really cool, like... So actually, you can actually see the, um... The vortex here. Can I never zoom in on this? There we go. You can see how they're more... Got a little bit more of an actual pattern there. Because that's what it would kind of look like coming off the, you know, the wingtip vortices and stuff coming off. Um, depending on the humidity, depending on the heat and stuff, you should see. I don't, I'm not sure if we get bug splatter on this one, but we definitely get, you know, there's just different little um, things that you would see on a real plane. Atmosphere effects and stuff that this, these packs had in. I forget what they, forget what it's called. I'm trying to find it. What is it called? What is it called? South Oak Company. South Oak. Yeah, so South Oak Company, they have these, uh, it's called Real Effects Plus. Um, and so obviously this one, I've got, I've got the Real Effects for the 787. Uh, they have some for the 747, they have it for the A320. Now, the A320, it works for the fly-by-wire A32NX as well. The 787, right now we're in the 787-9. It also works for the 787-8. Any mods done to the uh, Azobo 787, it'll work for those too. Same with the 747. Uh, they also have a uh, South Oak Company. They also have like the Aurora Borealis Northern Lights. Um, they have these uh, emergency light packs. So like when you're looking down in cities, you'll see like flashing red and you know red and blue lights, like emergency lights. Um, they've got traffic and uh, this call thing called traffic and sight um, that adds in uh, you know air balloons, gliders, stuff like that, helicopters. Um, in the U I think they have it just for the U.S. for that. I'm looking. Uh, it's a little. It's a little. Um, I think that it's good to use those, like the traffic and sight, like only when you're VFR flying, because they, they kind of fly in weird places where they should, probably shouldn't be flying, like right around airports, like right on approaches. They wouldn't be there because obviously ATC isn't controlling them. It's just kind of like visual. And then they also have um, FS Birds, so it'll add in, and they have that like in many different places, a bunch of Europe, a bunch of America, Canada. Um, I think New Zealand, I saw one there. Uh, I like that one because it's like you get, you get some more birds flying around. Unfortunately, though, I don't think they interact with your plane, so you can't actually have a bird strike or you know, hit a bird. Alright. Yeah, so right now I'm flying... Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn on my uh, flight tracking for this. <laughs> Oh, fooey. 
Oh, wait. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot to start recording. That's whatever. Because this is a, a Star Alliance virtual airline flight, and I forgot to record it. Why can't I... Got to hit the record button for my uh, virtual airline tracking. Oh well. Which kind of sucks because this is a pretty long flight. <laughs> uh, where state do you have to go to flight school? Um, the If you're able to, I've seen most people have suggested, recommended that if you're able to, you want to try to get, like, Florida is a big place to do it. Um, prob basically anywhere in the south where it's, you, know, you got decent weather most of the time. Um, the drawback of doing it, now, most everywhere you're going to have issues with weather. Everywhere you're going to have issues. Like Florida, you're going to have heat. Too, it's going to be too hot to fly. Um, planes do, you know, planes are not at their best performing when it's hot. They actually perform the best when it's actually cold, like a certain level of cold, not death cold like you can get here in the Midwest. But, you know, if you're, there's a, you know, you'll see like in Florida, there's a ton of flight schools in Florida because the weather generally is really good for a lot of the year, right? You got a lot of sun, a lot of clear, sunny days, you know, same with Arizona. But you do run into heat issues. You do run into hurricane season. You do run into that stuff. Um... I know a guy that, uh, if you if you pay attention on YouTube, he's he's been getting big, and uh, I'm so jo I mean, the guy is just a great business guy. He's made a ton of money, various ventures, and he got hit all of his things all the way through getting a CFI. The only thing he hasn't gotten is an ATP because an ATP you have to get basically you have to get 1,500 hours. So he's got everything. He did it in 90 days, which is ridiculously fast, expensive because you got you're flying every day and you got to pay for that. And you're cramming in really tight time. And now he's a CFI. He, I think he has a location out in Idaho and where he lives. And then I think further down, like in Colorado or something. And, but yeah, for, for flight school, if you can, if you can swing it, you want to try to get like somewhere in the South where you have better weather, Texas, Florida, lots of them. Um, I'm going to stay here in Wisconsin just because our house is here. Um... I mean, I suppose I don't have to. I mean, we could pick up and move. I mean, of course, do you really want to sell, you know, in the market, right? I mean, we could get good money for our house because, you know, how the housing market's ridiculous. The problem is, is then you have to go in, you're going to get a higher interest rate mortgage than what we have right now. And the price of any houses where we go are going to be higher than what we paid for this one. So, um, my original plan was to, but my original idea was, and my wife kind of brought this idea up too, was, and we were still, well, no, we had already bought the house, but it's like that we'd rent out our house and then I would go stay with my parents and go to the flight school here. That's uh, the ATP flight school in Waukesha in the Milwaukee area. And then, and they would, and my wife and son would go and spend, uh, spend a year in China or whatever. Uh, I think we've kind of tabled that. Um, I don't really want to do that as much. I mean, financially, it, it'd, it'd be really cool. Um, I don't really want to live with my parents and <laughs> have to do that and have to rent out the house and worry about all that. And I mean, it'd be nice to be able, you know, to cut that expense. But I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't want my wife and son to be gone for a whole year either. And basically the whole, the plan, and that, and with that plan originally was we were going to eventually, you know, once I got into that flight school, it was like, okay, we're, now we'll, we'll go travel to China, we'll visit, you guys will stay, I'll come back, and they would stay for a year or whatever it is, you know, while I do my training. Then they come back, I would assume we'd move back into our house and then have to try to cover the bills. But that would just save so much money during that time. But I think my wife got kind of um, impatient because she hasn't been back to China in five years. And so 
Finally, I said, fine, I don't know what I'm doing with the flight training yet. Let's go back and visit. And then she's like, well, I want to stay for the summer. And it's like, okay, you guys stay for the summer. And she's got her whole, she's got a bunch of things she wants to do too. And she wants to get into, you know, working at some point. So I got money saved. So, but I, part of me would, part of me want, would like to go somewhere warmer, you know, or somewhere more like slightly stabler weather like Florida, but but it's nice to be here in this location and, you know, since we're doing it this way anyway. I mean, and again, if we needed to, we could always crash at my parents' house or something, you know, and, you know, why, why move all the way somewhere else and then have to deal with those housing expenses? Again, we have a house here. And I'm getting my private, I'm working on my private pilot license right now. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way through with the school I'm at right now, which is just, a, it's a, you know, just a flight, a flight club at, uh, you know, Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport. Um, and so I'm paying out of pocket right now. The, the thing I want, I like about ATP is that I can get, I can get the loan. The un, it's still an unsecured loan, still, you know, pretty high interest rate. You know, even though I think when I applied last year for the loan, I think I got like a 6% interest rate or something, which is basically the same that I had for my student loans and is not that much more. I think our I think our mortgage rate, we got in at like 5.875 or something. So, you know, it's higher than I remember a couple, two, three years ago when I was first got into looking at this and I saw the ads, they were like, oh yeah, you know, you can get interest rates as low as 1%. And I'm like, well, 1%, you're getting, I mean, if someone is loaning you money for 1%, they're giving you money. They're giving you money because you could honestly take that loan. You could just get, if you can get a loan for 1%, depending on, you know, obviously you're not just you're not going to be able to just put that money in a high yield savings account. I, I mean, you could find maybe if you could find one. I mean, but if you put that money in, I mean, this is what this is what the wealthy do. I mean, they take out loans at a low interest rate. They then invest it in something that's going to earn them. You know, they take out a loan for two percent, then they invest it into something that's going to give them ten percent. Well, they've made eight percent. They've made money on that that loan. That's how that's how you make money. That's how rich people make money wealthy people um, obviously if I'm get, uh, taking a loan and I'm pumping it into a flight school I'm not gonna be getting any real return um, investment wise in the short term but obviously it's a long-term educational expense and six percent isn't bad I've seen a lot of people some people are like even when it was really good like the you know before everything kind of started getting all wonky in the last few years um, people were still getting like 13, 14, 15% because it's an unsecured loan. Uh, which again, like I said, it's like I got an, un you know, my student loans were 6%. My mortgage, again, mortgage is a secured loan. Student loans, I don't know if those are secured, but I think they might be there or they're backed or something. You know, those are around 6%. Well, if I can get 6% and that's what I got last year. Now it might be different. It might be, might go up and I'll, when I do that, I'm going to probably kick myself, for, but the timing wasn't right last year, and hopefully the timing is right this next year, and maybe I'll have my private pilot license, so I'll already be flying around just gaining more hours and experience before I even go to ATP to do the rest of it. Instrument, commercial, multi-engine, um, CFI, CFI, instrument, CFI, multi-engine, who knows, we'll see what I all get, see how long the money lasts. So I know I, I listened to a podcast where a guy was going, he was going to ATP and he took out the loan. He got the loans and everything, but the loan he got outlaid was for seven months or whatever, five months, whatever they quoted him. It's like, well, this is how long it's going to take you. And it ended up taking longer, not so much on the um, money wise. It wasn't like he, he didn't spend more money on ATP, the flight school itself. So he, you know, they quoted him. This is the price for the flight school. That's what he had paid through the point he got to. I think he quit. He quit after he got his commercial because he had run out of money um, through the loan because he had eaten more of the loan money for personal expenses for just the living. And so that's one big thing I'm worried about. That's why I want to make sure I have 
enough money saved up that you know can obviously get through the whole thing because you know having a CFI having your um, be a certified flight instructor is going to is just invaluable because you you have you can everywhere I mean all these schools are looking for some people to instruct um, they know that you need hours um, depending on how popular flight school is they need instructors um, doesn't pay crazy great I mean depending on where you are or if, if you become an independent flight instructor like I said this fly fly with Trent guy you know he's I think he's had his CFI for like maybe since the beginning of the year I don't know how long it's been when he did his whole thing it, time flies for me so it might have been more time than I thought but like one of his more recent videos he was talking about like how you can make twenty thousand dollars a month as a independent CFI now I know it's a clickbaity kind of title that's YouTube but he's like, that's what I'm making right now. And I'm like, what? How are you? 20,000? I mean, that's what most flight, that's what, you know, people who don't have 1,500 hours and they're trying to build hours and they're doing CFI work, they're making 20,000 in a year. And he somehow built this, you know, built his little independent business. And again, he's a business guy. He's a guy that knows how to do this kind of thing and make money. And he's making 20,000, you know. I'm sure 20,000 is maybe like, you know, top and probably, probably not average. But, you know, 20,000, I mean, if it's 10,000, that's crazy, you know, so anyway, I just, I got rambling there, but yeah, I'm, I'm flying out of uh, Milwaukee Mitchell right now, which is class Charlie airspace, class C airspace. So I have to, before our flights, we have to call clearance. Basically everything I do besides it not being IFR, an IFR flight, but it's VFR, I have to call clearance and say, you know, Milwaukee clearance, November 757 Lima Gulf. Uh, I think uh, say I'm Cessna 150 or Cessna 152, Cessna 172, whichever plane I'm flying. In that case, it would be 152, that call on that tail. Um, VFR, uh, VFR to the southwest, uh, 4,000 feet. That was what it was yesterday. We were at 4,000 feet. The clouds were... I think I like 5,000. <laughs> Scatter turn into broken. So we weren't able to do our power on stalls that we want to do. But today we should be able to if it stays clear. Uh, you know, so I say that. Uh, VFR to the southwest, 4,000 feet. Uh, November 757 Lima Golf. I don't know if I have to say the call sign again. Then they come back and say, oh yeah, you're clear to, clear to the southwest. Uh, you know... I think they said at 4,000. Usually they'll say at or below because, uh, especially with like a Cessna 152, but even the Cessna 1, it's just hard to get up there and stay up there and maintain it. And especially if we're going to be doing the maneuvers, which we were, we were anywhere from. And I think we then requested that. It's like, can we get at or below 4,000? And he said, well, talk to Tower or Departure about that. And so we did that. So we had to get clearance. Then we switched to ground and, get, and we taxi. Then we switched to Tower and fly out. Then we switched to Departure. So it's the whole thing. Because you're doing everything, because you're going into a class Charlie. Um, Milwaukee's a class Charlie. Uh, obviously, Chicago hair. Chicago is, that's Bravo. So I think, and the only difference there is in a communication, I think it's the equipment you need on board. I think it's the AB. And, and you might also need to get explicit instruction. Well, you need it for Charlie also to be allowed in. You need to transition into Charlie airspace. You need to transition into Bravo. And you hear that even if you if you use the default Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC, it's constantly doing that sometimes, especially if you're not on IFR, which again, in an airliner, scheduled flight, it's always IFR. It's always IFR because you're flying, because airliners, they don't really do a ton of flight planning to avoid clouds. Now they, they will kind of try to avoid storm cells you know, if they're clearly a big storm system right here, they will try to they'll, they'll route around that on the flight plan. But they're not trying to avoid clouds. VFR, you can't fly in the clouds. But airline, and also because you're flying in an airline, you're flying above 18,000 feet, which is um, Class A airspace. You must fly IFR in Class A airspace. And of course, most of the, you know, I, I can't remember what what we were talking about, but it was talking about 
I think we were talking about basic med. <laughs> I think we were talking about basic med, um, the medical, because with, for your medical as a pilot, you have, there's first class medical, second class medical, third class medical, and then there's basic med. So first class medical, uh, you have to get that renewed if you want to keep first class. I think you have to get that renewed every, every year, every 12 months. You need to get it renewed. However, if you don't get it renewed, so my age right now, I'm 37. Now, once I'm 40, it changes. But at 37 years old, before you're 40, you get, if you get your first class certificate, which is, allows you to fly ATP, allows you to fly air, as an air, airline transport pilot, fly a plane like this, fly passengers, and, and in the case of like UPS and FedEx in America, I don't know about like Cargo Lux or DHL, but the big airline cargoes, like the FedExes, the UPSs, the ones that are flying the big jets, you know, as lines, um, you need an ATP certificate. You need that. And to do that, you need, you know, your $1,500. But you also need a first class medical certificate. And it's, and it's because it's stricter. Because they, they're making sure your health needs to be at a certain level. And to hold that first class license, you need it every, you need to renew it every year. However, if you get a first class medical license like I have, and my, my first class is going to expire this October, I believe. I'll have to look. I can't remember when I went for it. I think it was October. So on October 31st at midnight, it will expire. Unless I go in and get a new, get it renewed, go in for another exam. My first class privileges will expire. However, it will then revert to third class. I think it reverses. It might revert to second class for a year. And then it'll revert to third class for three years. Because if I were to just get a third class medical, which is all you really need if you want to do private pilot flying, um, instrument flying, but as a private pilot, not for pay, you need to get a third class, which is very easy. And under the age of 40, you get that for five years. And you have those privileges for five years, and then you have to get it renewed. Go for another medical exam. So... So after the year on a first class medical, it then reverts to, I believe, a second class for a year and then reverts to a third class for three years. So you technically don't have to go every year to just be able to fly. Um, now, the second class is kind of the same thing. You get it. Second class, that's for flying, pay, paid flying, commercial flying. So if you want to fly cargo, you want to fly passengers, but you're flying like the, you know, Cessna 208, you're flying King Airs, you're flying those smaller planes that are not, um, I think even, like, if you want to fly a lot of corporate, I believe, I don't think you need an ATP to fly, um, like a Learjet or something like that. So you get your second class. Well, second class, I believe second class lasts for two years, I might be wrong, I have it written down, but second class, once that expires, it's either after two years or after a year, then it reverts to a third class, unless you renew it. And then third class is just five years. Um, and then you have basic med. And we were talking about basic med. Now, basic med is you've you've gotten a medical at some point since July of 2016. So within the last eight years, you've gotten a medical. You've been approved for a first class or a second class or a third class medical. And you've since let it lapse. You've since it's run out. So it's been five years. So you no longer have a, an active medical license, but you still want to fly. And you're like, I don't really want to go and get a whole new one. Because it costs, it, you know, that exam costs $300 or $200, depend, $200 to $300. And you're like, I don't really need it. I don't fly a ton, but I want to be able to fly once in a while. So you can fly under basic med, which basically is, okay, you've, you've, you've gotten a medical, um, a medical in the past. You haven't been denied a medical or your medical taken away from you because of health issues. And you have to, I think you have to see your, you have to go for a regular medical exam, a regular physical exam with your regular doctor, just a regular doctor, every four years. Which is crazy because I, as a truck driver, I have to go every two years. <laughs> so you can fly. Of course, that's, I'm commercial, right? So I, I suppose that makes sense. You know, most people driving their personal car don't have to go to a medical exam every four years or anything. 
Well, then we're talking about the privileges. Well, what, what can you do with a basic med? Well, you can't fly. I believe it's like you can't fly over 18,000 feet, I think. It might be lower than that. It might be 10,000 feet. You can't fly over 250 knots, which, yeah, I think you, you can't fly over 18,000, which is Class A airspace, so they don't want you flying up there if you don't have more than just basic med privileges. Um... You can't fly faster than 250 knots, which is the speed limit for under 10,000 feet. So, I suppose if you're over 10,000 feet, you're going to be flying slow. But typically, and then you can only fly, a, your plane can't weigh more than 6,000 pounds, or, and you can't fly more than six people, you plus five people. You know, so basically small, they want to keep you in a smaller, kind of private, more general aviation kind of plane, right? And so then my flight instructor asked me, it's like, okay, which ones of these do we have to worry about? You know, flying the Cessna 172 or the Cessna 152, which we've been flying lately. It's like the 152 only has two seats, so we don't have to worry about that. It doesn't weigh anywhere close to 6,000 pounds. We can't, Yeah, you know, we'll be lucky if we can get to 5,000 feet <laughs> and maintain in the 152. We'll get, we're lucky if we can get to 100 knots in the 152, much less 250. So it's like none of these even matter for us basic men. But again, something to know, you need to know it. And for some reason, it's something that they ask, I guess they ask it, I guess it's some, it's, it's a question that's asked during the oral exam for the, for the private pilot. And I'm thinking about now, I guess it makes sense because if you're getting your private pilot license, the likelihood, you know, and, 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 and that's all you get, or it's, again, the private pilot's the basic one, it's the first one. So everyone's getting a private pilot license, unless they're getting a sport or recreational. But most people are getting a private pilot license. Well, those, a majority of those people are not going to go on and need a first class or second class physical. They're going to be doing, you know, they're going to be general aviation just flying for fun. And at some point, they're going to let their medical lapse, and they're probably going to end up under basic med. So I guess that's why basic med gets so much play. Because, yeah, it, co it comes up in the study all the time on the questions, on the study tests and the oral tests and stuff. It's like, and I just thought about it. It's like, I guess that makes sense because most people are going to be, it's going to affect most people more often. So blah, 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 blah. There you go. <laughs> All right, we're at cruise. We got five and a half hours to go, so it's looking like we should be landing about 5:38 my time. 5:30 my time. I've yeah, I've done I've done some study, and that was something we talked about in ground during um. But, yeah, we did during our ground session the other day when we couldn't fly because uh, the plane I had, I think the other day, I'm trying to think what plane I scheduled the other day. I think I might have scheduled the 172 because that was the plane that was open. I couldn't, I couldn't fly the other one. But then I guess the 172, or whatever plane it was, I think I was in the 152 maybe. I can't remember. Because the... Uh, the the club has a, a Cessna 150, a Cessna 152, and then it has a Cessna 172. And one of them was, I think it was the 152, was out of service, like it had to get maintenance because there was a massive oil leak. Whoa, talk about some turbulence. Oh, I was going to turn on the sign, but I think we're fine. And so we could only do ground because there were no planes available. Plus the weather wasn't good. But then... I don't know what my all-time favorite plane is. I, I, I want to say my favorite plane right now to fly in Microsoft. I mean, if you would ask me a couple years ago, right? I was, you know, the fly-by-wire A32 and XD A320 was my favorite. If you asked me back when I was in X-Plane, well, the only plane I ever flew in X-Plane was the Zebo. Boeing 737-800, so that was my favorite plane. I think my favorite plane again right now is the 737. Either the 700 or the 800, doesn't matter. I like them both. 
Um, because I'm flying them almost all the time when I'm doing my virtual airlines, because I'm either doing Southwest or Ryanair, both fly to 737. I really like this plane, actually. I mean, the, the work that has been done by Heavy Division, by Horizon Sim, and by Kuro. So, uh, Heavy Division is the one, and I think Heavy is kind of like the platform that the other two have built on. But Heavy Division has done so, so much good free work making the Azobo 787X be flyable and really usable. And then you know, Horizon Simulation is doing that with the 9, you know, adding the 9 in and then the Kuro with the 8. And I like them. Well, otherwise, I'm thinking I like uh, the plane I like to fly. The one I want to, I haven't flown it a ton, but I want to fly it more if I do general aviation in Microsoft Flight Simulator is um, A2A's uh, Comanche. It's such a, I mean, if you're looking for a plane to buy a general, I don't, I haven't bought a lot of general aviation planes. That one I did, and I was really impressed just with uh, when I saw it. Um, I'm sure there's some other ones that are just as impressive, just as, you know, has the fidelity, has the external stuff. It's so cool because you can do a whole walk around. I'll have to do it on the stream at some point. It's a really cool plane. Um, the guy who creates it, I mean, it's literally modeled on his personal plane. <laughs> And so, um, the only problem with it, the reason I haven't flown it, I, I've been kind of flying, trying to fly the Cessna 172 and the 152 a little bit more, you know, when I'm not streaming and just, uh, you know, when I have a little bit of time to kind of just get more familiar with those planes because those are the planes I'm flying right now for my private pilot. A plane I would like to see available for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the Piper, uh, I think the Piper Archer. I'm trying to think what the Piper... Whichever, I'm trying to find the planes that they have at like now they do. Um, ATP does have the Cessna 172s, but they don't have them at the Waukesha location. Waukesha they have like the Pipers. They have the Piper uh, Seminole, but that's the multi-engine. And then they have the Piper, I think the Archer. And those are low wings, right? The Cessnas have the wings on top. The uh, Pipers have them on the bottom. You know, and it, it's cool to be able to fly the plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator because you can f get familiar where the buttons are. I think that's the biggest. Thing, um, is having a familiarity where where things are in your cockpit and I think that proves it I mean especially like airlines Hi, Captain. I was wondering if you'd like anything to eat. Anything from the when these guys go for their airline they're training when they get hired by let's say they get hired by Southwest or you know, yeah let's say Southwest what you typically these guys do I mean they get the manuals they get all they have to study all that but they also, the, you know, you'll buy a, you can buy, um, like a poster of the cockpit, right? A poster of the flight deck, right? It's got all this. It's just a poster. And you kind of set it up like, you know, and then you just sit in front of it and you press the button. You do your flows. And I think, I mean, obviously, probably a good idea to still do that. And that's much more portable than your whole computer. But if you have Microsoft Flight Simulator or an X-Plane or whatever, and you have a actual nice, especially if you have a high fidelity study level kind of aircraft especially like the PMBG like the Phoenix um, but I'd even say this plane is pretty decent they've added a lot of stuff in it's got you know most of the buttons are there and even if like some of the buttons don't work you can still point at it like you would if you were just looking at a poster and what's so cool is you can actually do a flight you can actually click all the things and I think it's it's such a it's such a great tool and yeah, my flight instructor even said it's like you're those hours you've put it that the hours I've put into you know flight simming over the years is really paying off because he's like yeah you're already pretty comfortable you know we need to work on things we obviously need to make it you know get you you know hundred percent ready for the check ride but you're so you have such a feel because you know what you're looking at you know what you're you know you kind of have the concept you're not just coming in blind. On, in a plane because it's like you know what the sky should look like <laughs> you know you know what the you know we did like I said we did this caused a little bit of controversy on the ATP forums um, because the ATP forums a lot of the people on there are obviously people who are prospective students prospective pilots but then the great thing about the forums is there's a lot of people that went through ATP flight school they're pilots at major airlines now and they mentor, they, they give you advice, they do these things, and 
I think we were talking about air sickness or something. I can't remember what it was. No, it wasn't air sickness. It was, um, I think it was talking about getting your, you know, doesn't make sense to get your private pilot outside of ATP first and then move on. And whatever, talking about that and that's something else. And I think I've talked about that ad nauseum. Uh, but speaking of nausea, I think I kind of mentioned in passing that I had started my flight training outside just because, you know, the timing and everything. And it's like, I just want to get up and do something, you know, see if I can even do it. And my first couple lessons, actually every lesson, I felt a little airsick at points. And then I mentioned what we had done, especially the last two lessons, or the first two lessons. The first lesson, again, which is not what you should, probably should be doing first lesson, This is, and everyone let me know this. It's like, oh, your, your uh, instructor isn't doing it right. Well, because the, just the way the weather was, he couldn't, we couldn't do what he wanted to do. So he's like, well, we can... We did, um, we did ground reference maneuvers, which is like a stage two thing. You do that probably 12, 15, 20 hours into training. It's a little bit further in. Now, we didn't do the ground reference maneuvers at the actual altitude we were supposed to do, and we did them a lot higher just to get the idea. I think that, and that was his old point. It's like, I just want to introduce this to you, see how you do, you know, kind of get you a feel for the plane because, you, you know, and a feel for wind. There was a nice windy day. He's like, okay, these, that's the point of these maneuvers is to learn how to make you know, there's the um, a turn around a point, which is you just making a circle around a point on the ground. You pick a barn or a crossroads and you're making a circle. But the circle is a circle on the ground. So like if you're looking at like Volanta, you're looking at like a, your, um, you know, f um, what is it called? For flight on your iPad, it should be a perfect circle equidistant from that point, right? You're always the same distance from that point, making a nice perfect circle. Or as close to a perfect circle as possible. And that requires you to adjust your bank angle during the turn. Because if the wind is coming from one direction, well, it's going to be pushing your plane away at, on one side of it. That wind is going to be pushing you away from the object. On the other side, it's going to be pushing you toward the object. And so when you look, you're going to have like an oval or an ellipse. Or a, you're going to be closer on one side. You know, your circle's not going to be really a circle. Because it might be a circle in the air because you're doing a constant bank. And so you made a circle in the air, but your plane is moving with the wind, and so on the, the ground track looks like an oval. And so that's a big thing when we talk about, um, like we have a heading and track. So right now I'm on heading one, you know, I have it set to heading. But if you look right here, it says track actually, track two, four, 244 degrees mag magnetic. So our actual track, that's our actual track. Now... And see, I can set it that I can set my track as 199 or whatever versus heading. And I'm not going to go into all this. Hey, ha Chesham, why are we... My camera decided to crap out again. Yeah, see, it doesn't it doesn't go back to default. Whatever. Hey, Chesham. But anyway, you have your ground... You have your heading, you have your ground track. These are different things. And actually, I don't think I've done it very much when I've been flying on VATSIM, and I don't know what they do on VATSIM, how it works, but in real life, if you have the ability to turn this to track, it actually makes it very helpful because ATC, when they're giving you headings, when they're giving you vectors, uh, they're giving you, um, it's your ground track. They're going by your ground track. So your plane, for example, if we had a lot of, we do have a lot of wind here. Now you can see on here, because it's going by track on this map, we're actually still straight. 244. We actually have a wind. We actually have a headwind with a cro little bit of crosswind. And so we're being, we're actually being pushed to the left. We're actually being pushed to the left. So I believe that's act our actual heading right there. Let me actually, I'll set it. Let's see if I can set my heading here. I believe now if I were to set it if I were to I think select heading here let's do that now notice that so I set our heading I set my heading to 244 degrees see that and now our plane our track is actually 240 239 see that so really 
I think that's actually moving over the heading. So see how that's see how crazy that is? We've actually gone we're not actually on our route. Now if I go back to now if I set the heading to where we should set it, which will be over here, or I go for example, I set the track. Let's set it to track and it was what, 244? If I hit set my track 244, it's gonna go on the track of 244. But there's the heading. But my heading. Now we're just gonna go L nav. Like what is my actual heading? Where is it going? Why is it going over there? We're on L nav. What's it doing? Why is it doing that? L nav, come on. <laughs> I was trying to just show you what heading I was on there, but now it's following the heading. It shouldn't be. Why is it like that? Landing at Phoenix was miserable. Yeah. Did you have, was it like frame rate issues or was it just like bad flying? There we go. Now it's going back to the actual. All right. So our track is 244 because that's where we actually are, are where we actually want. What is going on? Kind of like bumping, bobbing back and forth right now. Yeah, but so you have your heading, and the heading is, well, when you plan a flight, VFR typically, because again, when you're in these airlines, everything's planned for you usually. But... Hey, thanks for the subscription, Bug June. Bug June. Oh, wow, it's already after 12. I need to start getting ready to go my flight lesson at 1. Or to leave at 1. Make sure my wife's going to be heading back over here too. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get there. I don't have a car. But yeah, you're gonna, when you plan a flight, you, you, you know, a VFR flight, right? You got the, you get your chart out and, and again, you get your paper chart out. Now, if you're on four flight, you're on something like Sky Vector, um, here in the sim, you use Sky, a lot of us use Sky Vector. Sky Vector, so when you take out your paper chart and you plan by hand, you're gonna draw a line between point to point, right? So I wanna fly from, let's say I wanna fly from Milwaukee to Cincinnati. I'm gonna draw a line between Milwaukee and Cincinnati, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out, okay, what is the core, what is my true course? And let's say my true course is, will probably be, that would probably be, eh, let's say 150 degrees, right? But then you have to put in your wind correction because the wind is gonna be pushing you. For example, here we have the wind pushing us, right? So true course is 150, let's say the wind correction, we need to add four degrees. So now it's 154 because the wind is coming from the other, you know, coming from the west or something pushing us. So now we're at 154 degrees. Then we have to do the magnetic deviate or the magnetic variation, which is because the magnetic north pole and the north pole are actually slightly different areas. So you have to do that. So now that makes bumps us, let's say to 153 degrees. I don't know what exactly is. I don't have the chart in front of me. And then you have to put in the, um, I believe you have to put in the, what would be next? Uh, you need to put in the, uh, I think what it is. So you got the magnetic in there, magnetic uh, variation. Uh, we got the wind correction. You probably want to put in the magnetic. I think then you do the magnetic, um, magnetic deviation, which is, uh, Oh, I, I have to look. I think it's... I think it's... I forgot. I'm gonna have to look. <laughs> I don't remember what it is. I don't want to pause either. I'll have to look what it is. I think it's like Teeny Wenzel or something. Or Denzel Wenzel or something. I'll have to look. I don't want to pause. I guess I could really quick. Uh, Mark Tweezy. Right there. Mark Tweezy. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter if I pause because I'm not tracking the flight. Um, but the, yeah, you put in all these things and then you come out with the course or what the ground track is going to be or what you, I think, or, or you, you come, you finally come out with your magnetic heading, which is the actual or the, the heading you're going to put in here, right? 
And you can see how our heading... So let's actually put it in. What? You know, so there, that would be our final thing that we'd put on. Like, we did all this planning, we did all the measuring, and it comes out to that. And so that's the heading. That's what you actually put in on your plane, and that's the course you're trying to hold in the plane. That's where you're pointing your plane. And because of the wind, it's going to push you back to your true... I think this push... The track is actually your true... Should end up being your true course that you originally measured. So if you had to go... You know, in this example, we need to be on a course of 243 degrees. Now, because... This does it a little bit different. I think in the Airbus, in the A320, the A32NX, um, and I think in the PMDG, in the 737, it'll actually show your plane, your little plane icon here, your little triangle. It'll actually show it pointed the way it actually is flying. It's actually pointed. So really, our plane, we are pointed this way. We're pointed to this point. This is where our nose is, nose is pointing. You can see how our nose is actually pointed way over there. So on this plane, this little triangle is showing actually where you're pointed. So we're actually flying. The plane is, we're pointed over here. So let's say there's, you know, whatever's over here. We're pointed there, but the wind is pushing us this direction, 243, where we need to go. And that's why we need to point that way. So actually, I don't think we'll be able to see it. Actually, we can actually, it's actually better to, out here. It's actually brighter out here. So once I leave, I'll probably leave it on this screen one of these cameras. Now if we get up here, it's kind of hard to tell. We don't really have anything to go off of. I think that's kind of how we're flying right now. You see how we kind of got that angle? But oh, we're going over the ground. It's easier to tell, and I, I'll show you this. I'm gonna have to do a flight sometime. We'll have to do a VFR, general aviation flight. Cause there are, when I fly general aviation, I've noticed it. You can kind of see, if you were to draw a line right now, our plane is going this way, right? See how that, the plane is going that way over the ground. That's our ground track. That's why in the plane, that TRK, that's track. We want the plane to go on this track. ATC, when they give us instructions, they're giving us the ground track because that's what they see. They see where we're flying according to the ground, according to the radar. So, you see how we're flying that way? We're not flying over there. <laughs> we're not flying over there. We're actually flying right here. It's hard to tell. It's easier to tell when you actually have a... Re we need like a better reference point. If we actually had like a road, a straight road that we were following. But that's kind of how our plane is. I, it's kind of what it looks like. I don't know if you believe me, but that is what it is. We're, we're actually pointed off to the right. The wind is pushing us. And so we're actually staying straight on this line right here. They say heading. That's the weird thing. They say, they, they say it's a heading, but from my understanding and from what my flight instructor told me, it's, they're, they're going off a ground track because that's what they're seeing. You know, it's the same as when you're, you know, if they would give you, when they tell you there's like traffic also, like the, hey, traffic at your one o'clock. That's off of the one, your one o'clock based on the path that they're watching you fly, which is the ground path. Because they can't tell, the radar can't tell where your nose is pointing, right? So, so in this example right now, you can see we have kind of a, I think we're, you know, we got about a five, let's see, we're about a six degree deviation here from, between the heading and the track. If they were, to, if someone, was, if they were to tell us, hey, at your 12 o'clock, there's traffic at your 12 o'clock, we'd actually have to look like right over there. That would be our 12 o'clock according to the ground track. Yeah, actually, when they give you a heading, we should be using track on here. That's why they have that. I think that's actually why they have track on there, to be honest. Because, I'm not sure, like, heading... And again, I've never flown... Like, I've always flown in the sim, and it's never been a big deal. But in reality, yeah, I think that's how it works. Because right now, you can see, I have my heading set to here. 
And I have it set there just to show you what the... See, our heading is actually 249. The plane is actually flying heading 249. It all and it depends. It depends on what um, now ATC in real life ATC is giving you a ground track, I believe. Now it depends on you have to know what your flight plan is telling you. Maybe the flight plan is telling you you're heading with the wind correction, because yeah, I think the flight plan is telling you the heading. Because when you do all your flight planning, especially if you're doing like VFR, this happens with you know when you're first learning your flight training and everything, and I'm learning this myself is you, you get your true course, which is, okay, this is on the map. You draw a line from point A to point B. That's the course. That's, you know, whatever, you know, 244 degrees. That's what it is. That's what you would need to fly. If there was no wind, there was no wind, and you had no magnetic, de uh, magnetic deviation because of the instruments messing with the magnetic compass, which isn't a big thing either. It's like one or two degrees which over a long distance, obviously. But the true course is what you would fly if there was no wind. And if there was no, and if there was no magnetic um, variation between the true north and magnetic north. Because there's even that, if you look at the charts. Actually, I could bring it up. Let me see if, man, time is flying here. I'm kind of want to talk about I'm not gonna actually I'm not gonna bring that up because I need to start getting ready to go for my actual flight training so I'm gonna kind of wrap it up but but at some point I'm gonna show you I'll show you what I what I know and I might be wrong on some things because I'm still early on and I don't know everything 100% but I'm learning but basically when you plan a flight especially VFR again I have uh, flying airliners is a little bit different the same concepts going on is you get you get your true course true course is gonna be if everything if there was no wind and there was no medic, magnetic uh, variation or magnetic deviation because of stuff in your met metallic objects in your plane messing with the magnetic compass. And this is again generally for when you're flying um, smaller planes. So you have your true course, then you need to take into account the wind correction. So for example right now we have 77 knots of wind coming from you know the from our front right. So that's going to be pushing us to the left and slowing us down. So typically when you're doing VFR flight planning, you you need to figure out, you're doing most of it for your fuel. Know how much fuel you're going to consume. Know if you're going to be able to make it to point to point. So you figure out your speed too with that wind slowing you down. So true course, you then you do the wind correction. That's going to bump you over a few degrees one way or the other, depending on the wind. Then you figure out your magnetic deviation, true north and magnetic north, and that's on the map. There's lines on the map that show you you have to subtract or add degrees. Then you adjust for the magnetic deviation, which is metallic objects in your plane messing with the magnetic compass a little bit. And that's usually written on, there's that little card. I don't think we have it. Do we have it on this plane? Typically there's a... I don't think... Typically it'll be a card. They don't have it on this one. I don't think there, there might not be that much. It might be... Who knows? But like you'll see it on the smaller planes, right? You'll see that little card that has the compass headings written and it's slightly different. Because they've... The manufacturer tested it and they know exactly how much all the little things, all your instruments are affecting that ma uh, the, the compass. You do all that, and I believe that's all you have to do. I might be missing one or two. And you come out then with your course heading or your magnetic heading or whatever it is. Your I think it's your course heading. That is what you then plug in. So I think, so for example, if we were to go like this and just go heading, nothing should change. Notice how nothing changed. The plane hasn't moved because we are on that heading. We're on heading 248 where the triangle is. But because of the wind, it's going to stay on that 242 track. Now if I were to change this to track, now our plane's going to start moving over because it wants to go right there and then the heading's going to change. We're going to go back to heading. Let's not mess with that. 
<laughs> so I believe... I believe... I might be wrong, but I believe that the ATC is giving you track. Technically. Which is confusing, because they do say heading. And technically, you're asking for vectors, you're not asking for heading, because heading is... Heading's what you put in, taking into account the wind, and the magnetic variation, and the magnetic deviation, and all that stuff. And so, you know, depending on the wind, I could put in heading 270, and if there's enough wind, I'm actually flying track one, you know, 180. Or something, right? <laughs> you know, a ridiculous amount of wind. I could actually, I could be pointed completely, you know, it, it, okay, that's a little extreme, but, you know, I could have heading 250 in, and my track is 240 because of the wind. And that all the other variables, the deviations and stuff, which are usually like one or two degrees. They're not, depending on where you are, like in the US, like I'm in the Midwest, our magnetic variation, the variation between true north and magnetic north is like one or two degrees, depending where you are. One or two degrees either direction, because we're right on the right on the line, I think, between where they switch. But if you go out and fly, if you're flying in the Pacific, the difference between your true course and that magnetic variation could be up to 15 degrees difference. Hmm. Yeah, the heading is used for vectoring, but I don't know if they're, I don't know how the, I don't know how, how tr ATC can give you that, how they can know what to vector you as, unless they're doing the calculations on the ground, or, and again, it might, maybe their system has that built in, that it, it, it shoots out the heading versus a track. It shoots out the heading, and it, it takes into account the winds that you're playing. I don't know how they do that. But what they... Because what they see on the radar is your track. And so if there's a... If, if they want you on track 240, and there's a wind pushing you to the left, you know, coming from your right and pushing you, you're going to need to be on, a, you know, a heading of 250 or 241 or 242, right? You're going to need to be pointed into the wind a little bit to... Um, counteract that. Now again, I don't know if they have that built into their system. Yeah. Let's see, what does this say here? Air traffic control vectoring refers to providing aircraft with specific headings to fly rather than following their own chosen track. Yeah, but again, that's... So in this con okay, let me read the whole thing and I'll kind of... So in this context, vectoring involves providing headings to aircraft. These headings are typically given to guide aircraft safely through airspace around weather or to facilitate spacing and sequencing. While track refers to the actual path. Climb and maintain flight level tree 990, Hainan 472 heavy. That's what I... Let's see, my, my, and I might, maybe I'm confused because my flight instructor, because he said... Yeah, because they do say heading, but that's... Heading is a weird thing unless they have it. Because they need to know where. Because your ground track is what's going to be. I suppose I suppose if you're giving everyone headings. In the same area, they're all being. I, they probably they might be giving you headings. Yeah, they probably yeah, they probably are giving you headings. I would think. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if the, if the system, like the radar system itself or the system, their ATC systems, take into account all that and adjust it so that they can just give you heading. Because not everyone has the track ability. Air China um, 451 heavy traffic is 9 o'clock, 4 miles at flight level tree 9 or 0 Boeing. That's why I'm, I'm wondering if that's what it is. Because when they're seeing your track, they're seeing your track. And so then they see another plane coming, and they don't want you guys to run into each other. You're, they're going, you know, they're seeing both your tracks. You know, this plane that, you know, coming this way, and then your plane, they're seeing that. And I suppose the heading, you know, if they give you guys different headings, it's, you know, not really going to matter because your tracks will deviate 
enough, you know, if they give, you know, you're on a collision course and they give this plane, hey, go on this heading, the track is not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to do the same thing. Yeah. I was thinking more on, like, for, for, for keeping spacing of traffic, I, it doesn't really matter because if you give one plane, if, you know, I'm flying well, heading 180 and another plane's flying heading 175 and they want us to kind of deviate from each other, they give me heading 210 and they give the other guy 160. Even if our tra our tracks are still, you know, our tracks are going to be slightly not that, but we're deviating, we're staying away from each other. So as long as you're giving both people headings, or you, you know, you got to give them both the same thing. You don't give one person a track and one person a heading. Where I'm thinking it's weird. It's like, well, what if they're giving you headings to the runway? I guess they give you headings to the runway, and then you get to a certain point. And the point of vectoring to a runway is not to line you up exactly with the runway, but it's because at a certain point you can just get in visual and you have it. Yeah. So maybe they do give headings. I don't know. Yeah, they do. I mean, they do say headings, so. But they see, but that's what I mean. It's it's weird because, like when I fly out of Mitchell, they give me they give me the runway heading, right? But if I stay on my if I put my if I follow the runway heading out, within a few like within a minute or two, I'm going to be in the path of the parallel runway, depending on the wind. If I have a nice crosswind which I typically do because just the way the winds come. Depending on the crosswind, within a minute or two, I will be in the path of departing aircraft, the, you know, departing aircraft out of Mitchell. So it's, but again, like separating planes flying out, if you're really separating them, you know, the issue I find I, and, and if everyone, if everyone's avoiding yeah, I don't, it's, that's weird. I'll have to ask about that because, because just think about that on, because on, on takeoff, if I fly runway heading, I'm not actually flying the runway heading. I like, my plane is pointed on the runway heading, but my plane is actually drifting this way or this way, right? So here's the, here's the runway heading. And so I'm pointing my plane like this, but the wind is pushing me over here. And here's the other runway, you know. Whatever it is. A vector is a magnetic heading given to an aircraft by air traffic control to be flown for a period of time or distance. It can be a magnetic compass heading or the numerical value of a heading. Yeah, I guess. I, and I mean, that makes sense that they're giving you heading because if you're flying, I mean, obviously these planes, your more advanced planes have the track and heading and it's all this. But if you're flying a plane with the analog heading thing and they say fly heading 2-4, you're going off of that. And you're not figuring out all the wind correction, you know, you can't figure out a track. And so they're giving you, and that's the question, like, how do they know, like, I wonder on their systems, and that's why I have to figure out, it's like, do they have, are they able to see where that heading is going to take you ground-wise? And again, if that even matters when you're up in the air, and they're just trying to keep you away from other aircraft. It doesn't really matter what your ground track is at that point. Your heading, yeah, and that's what it is. I mean, when you're, when, you're, when they're doing the traffic control, and I suppose even when they're trying to get you to the airport, they're just getting you pointed at the airport. They're not getting you lined up with the runway, typically, like 100%. They're getting you lined up enough, and again, usually, depending on the wind and the deviations and the variations and everything, it's gonna get you pretty much where you can see the runway, and then you have to fly to the runway. But, yeah, that's an interesting thing to think about. The screens are so bright inside that it makes it look a lot darker. Also, my screen... <laughs> like, my, my big screen that I'm flying on looks a lot brighter than the screen that I'm watching the stream on. Even the stream looks darker on the stream. You guys want me to turn that up a little bit? I can always do that. Let me just turn the, the gain up just a little bit so you can see. There we go. Let's 
get a little bit more bright. It's not so dark. You're probably right. I mean, chat, chat GPT is saying that. And they do say heading. So I'm wondering... Like I said, it's like I don't think it really matters a ton if they're giving you a heading. And they're giving you a heading and then they can see where your plane is going and they, can, they give you more headings. They just keep adjusting you back to the airport. So it's not an exact science probably for them. That's probably what it is. Hey, Edwin. That's probably what it is. They, they give you the heading. They give you the magnetic heading. And if the track, if your ground track is off like 15 degrees, they're going to see that. That's like, okay, he's kind of going this way. I need him to, you know, and he, and they might... But again, I would think that would lead to a lot of communication issues where it's like, well, hey, did you get my heading? Why aren't you flying it? And, well, because the wind. <laughs> so they, I'm wondering, yeah, I wonder if their system, maybe their system is sophisticated, has some extra sophistication that it actually takes into account wind to create a ground track and then they it spits back the heading they want you to go on. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Something to think about. But like I said, we're going to do, at some point I'm going to have to do, we'll have to do a VFR flight. Alright, let me turn on my center pumps here. Locked ATC. Problem is, with using the Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC is that, uh, I have no, it doesn't, there's no, um, automatic... Yangon Center Air, China 451 Heavy. Actually, there is. Three, I could have the... Zero. Air China 451 Heavy, Yangon Center I should have turned that on. I wish there was a way... I wish there was a shortcut to turn it on. Let's see if I can figure this out. Oops. All right, so we're gonna try to set this up, and then I gotta get ready. I gotta get going soon. <laughs> I want to set this up so the co-pilot can help because I, but because I'm using Flow, I don't have all these. So let's see if I can find some of this stuff. Let's see, uh, custom toolbar, I think, is what we want. No. Of course, there's not anything available for it, even though this is totally part of. That's a Microsoft Flight Simulator box. Why can't I find it? I think it's Misfits Panels, right? There it is. I just don't want to have to exit all the way out 
or go to the screen. Okay, so I don't want AI piloting. I just want AI radio communication. Let's do that. There we go. Perfect. Let the, uh, hopefully, co-pilot will do that. I'm also going to turn my altitude down 10,000. So when we hit top of descent, it will descend. Um, if I'm not back in time. Now, the way the winds are going, because we do have a headwind, it's actually slowing us down. Initially, it seemed like we really, you know, I mean, it's been about an hour now, hour and a half, and we have, we've been kind of sitting at five and a half hours for that whole time. So I think this flight will take us a little bit later than I thought. Again, there's that thing we were talking about earlier where we came out of, we got out of um, Chongqing uh, and uh, suddenly the flight time was down to like six hours. I'm like, really? Really? Six hours? It was supposed to be seven and a half. And now it's looking like it's going to be closer to more than seven and a half hours because we've been kind of just sitting at the same clock time here. I actually have my stopwatch going on my phone. So I set this, I turned, I, can I show it, where is it? I started this at uh, when the flight time to go was kind of sitting at six hours. It was just sitting at six hours, kind of going back and forth. And you can see how an hour and 15 minutes has passed and we've only burned about 40 minutes off the flight time, so. so. I think we should be fine, I think I should be fine, no problem. We'll probably be flying later into the night than I was hoping to, but at least we shouldn't overshoot our target. All right, so I'm gonna go outside here. And at some point in the future, we're gonna talk more about ground track and heading and all that good stuff, magnetics. I'll kind of show off how to look at all that stuff when you're planning a VFR flight and what that guy was even talking about the whole time. Is the moon out here? I wish the drone camera didn't tilt over as you were flying, because I'd rather put the I'd rather keep it on like one of these cameras. I guess we'll do this camera. How's this one for a camera, guys? Oh there's the moon. These are the quieter ones, for sure. Needs more camera options for this plane. Only problem with this view is you can't see it's Air China, but you get to see the ground, our ground track, really nice. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I will see you guys in probably four, four hours, probably four, four and a half hours. I'll be home. So, <laughs> uh, enjoy the flight. Uh, right now we are over. Just entered into uh, Myanmar, into Burma. So coming up on Mandalay, we'll be off our left a little bit. Uh, we'll pass over uh, Bangladesh, India, a little bit of Pakistan, and then we'll be in the Gulf of Oman, and then into Dubai. So I will see you, hopefully, before landing. Thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already, hit that follow button, hit the like, hit the subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for stopping in. Um, doing a long haul. Uh, this will probably be what I'll do on days um, where I have a flight lesson. Uh, because my flight lesson is typically a block of three hours, so it'll probably be four hours of time where I have to step away. But if I can do a nice long haul flight, it works perfectly. So, thanks for stopping in. Uh, keep leaving comments. I'll try to read them. Try to get... I'll scroll through them. I'll, I'll kind of look at the comments when I'm away from the computer, too. And, uh... Thanks for stopping in. I'll see you. See you later.
Okay, guys, never mind. <laughs> Oops, I got my camera. Uh oh. No, 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 don't do this. Thing. There we go. Well, never mind about that, actually. Let's back up. Well, now I'm doing a long haul, and uh, I'm not doing anything this afternoon. <laughs> That's totally fine. Uh, my my flight instructor. Let's see. When did he text me? I didn't look at the text before I started shutting everything down. Well, I didn't shut things down, but unhooking everything. 11:59. So it was actually an hour, almost an hour ago. <laughs> I didn't read my text. Well, that's fine. Well, now I get to I get to see this. Now there's part of me that wishes we're gonna do this night. I'm I'm. Let me know what you guys think if we should do you want to do these flights at the real like when these flights really happen time wise Or should we just do it like try to get the flights where we can see day more because I do like it when we can see the ground more But let me know what you guys want what you guys like um, If I had known I wasn't gonna be flying uh, doing My flight lessons today. I would have I Would have done some more short flights but, I guess that's how it goes. I, already, I was already well into this flight. We were yeah, we were already up in the air and going on this flight when, uh, when I got that text. So. Yep, so my flight instructor, he is sick. Oh, I guess we're not flying today. It's a bummer, but I guess I'll have to do some other stuff around the house. I guess I can clean. <laughs> Actually, I got... Maybe I'll maybe I'll uh, prepare some other flights for this long haul series. And, you know, it kind of gets me though because man, if I had known that if I wasn't going to be flying, if I wasn't going to be going out, I would could have done maybe two or three, done a good day of turnarounds. But at the same time, this allows me to a little bit more time to do things uh, for the stream. So never mind, we will be going. Now we're now we're now I'm just like okay well now how fast can we finish this flight? <laughs> I suppose I could always do a time acceleration as well if I wanted to. Step away and uh, just grab so I grab a bite to eat. And then I kind of want to. And then I will kind of kind of show you what I mean. Do a little. Oh, again, that'd be so cool to do like a VFR right now, but. Already in this flight. Oh well.
Decimal 7 Air China 451 Heavy. Goodbye. DACA Center Air China 451 Heavy Flight Level 360. Air China 451 Heavy DACA Center Radar. Contact continued to CTG 25.
contact is Calcutta Center on 120 decimal one. Good day. Going to 120 decimal one Air China 451 Heavy. Calcutta Center Air China 451 Heavy flight level 360. Air China 451 Heavy Calcutta Center radar. Contact continue to Shamak.
traffic is 9 o'clock, 4 miles at flight level 350 Airbus. Report them in sight. Qatari 638 heavy traffic is 1 o'clock, 2 miles at flight level 340 Boeing. Report them in sight. Vietnam Airlines 37 heavy traffic alert. 7 o'clock, less than 1 mile, flight level 345 Airbus. Report them in sight. Qatari 638 heavy have the traffic.
in sight.
Charlie MC0123 just followed.
Center Air China 451 Heavy requesting vector to next waypoint. Air China 451 Heavy, continue to Punal, turning, and following heading 285 resume on navigation. Continue to Punal, turning, and following heading 285 proceed on course Air China 451 Heavy. Center Air China 451 Heavy. Request flight level 400. Air China 451 Heavy climb and maintain flight level 400. Climb and maintain flight level 400 Air China 451 Heavy.
Hello. Hi, Captain. I was wondering if you'd like anything to eat. Anything from the menu, or maybe a snack. No, thanks. No problem. If you change your mind, just give me a call.
Decimal 9 or 5 Air China 451 Heavy. Goodbye. Muscat Center Air China 451 Heavy Flight Level 400. Air China 451 Heavy Muscat Center Radar Contact. Continue to tap to.
contact center on 126.5. Good day.
Hello. Hi, Captain. I just wanted to come by and ask if everything was going okay. Everything is absolutely fine, yes. Thanks for asking. Just give me a buzz if you need anything.
201 climb and maintain flight level 190. Climb and maintain flight level 190 Oman Air 201. Spicejet 5 Niner traffic is 6 o'clock, 4 miles, at flight level 3, 20 Airbus. Report them in sight. KLM 878 Heavy traffic is 9 o'clock, 4 miles, at flight level 3, 40 Boeing. Report them in sight. Spicejet 5 Niner have the Airbus in sight. traffic in sight. Scott Center Air China 451 Heavy requesting vector to next waypoint. Air China 451 Heavy continue to Yumiko turning and following heading 290 resume own navigation. Continue to Yumiko turning and following heading 290 proceed on course Air China 451 Heavy.
Alright, we're getting close. Getting close to Dubai. 23 minutes, it's saying. And right now we're going by Muscat back there. Muscat Oman. That's probably Dubai over there. Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all that. Spice Jet 5 Niner traffic is 4 o'clock, 3 miles at flight level 3, 20 Airbus. Report them in sight. KLM 878 heavy traffic is 9 o'clock, 3 miles at flight level 3, 40 Boeing. Report them in sight. Coming up fast on the top of descent, I don't know how much ATC Spice is going to give us. Niner, happy Airbus in sight. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So we're gonna pull up, we're gonna go start getting things ready for our descent, ready for arrival. 
Uh, so we're at a cruise. We have the passenger signs are automatic. Altimeter is set to standard. Top of descent. Um, for top of descent, we're going to check the recall. That is right over there. See, recall popped up on the screen there. Descend and maintain flight level 390 if we 1236. Yep. Recall checked. CDU approach page set. So we're going to select the flap speed for landing. Standard is 25 degrees or 30, 25 or 30 degrees for landing. Let's go in there. And I did ref. I believe 30 is full. Um, we'll go 25. Now let's set a lower altitude. It's warning us about that. So it will do its own descent. We'll go down to 20,000. Hopefully, the uh, air traffic control will do something. Emirates 570 heavy descent. All right, so we got, we're going to go flaps 25, speed 147. We do have, for our planned approach, we're looking at runway, ooh, it might probably be a different direction here. I'm going to flip this around because we got a three knot tailwind for runway 30, so we're actually probably going to flip around. Both runways are well over, are 14 and a half thousand feet, so did not have any issues with, um, landing distance. Question is where do we park? Actually that's why I'm going to look at my ATIS here. So uh, Dubai ATIS Alpha from 2231 That's a little bit old. Get my zoo. Yeah, so it's about an hour, half an hour old. Okay, from half an hour ago, this ate us, so it's still up to. Decently up to date, might change. Unable to maintain VNAV descent speed, extend speed brakes that required. What are you talking about? There we go. Alright, so we're starting our descent. Let's get those uh, passenger signs back on. Oops, did not want an Air increase. China 451 Heavy, you are 500 feet below your assigned altitude. Climb and maintain flight level 400. Zero, zero. Climb and maintain flight level 400. Zero, zero, actually, you know China, what? Four, it's because I heavy. didn't put the new arrival in. Let's hold, actually. Alright. Let's go into our arrivals. Let's get that. We have so we're going to expect ILS approaches arrival runway three zero left. Um, surface wind is eighty degrees at three knots. Okay, so, but they're still giving us. They're still doing approaches. Runway three zero left. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, and then we'll see what ATC gives us because I doubt they're going to like that uh, tailwind. But it is what it is. Air China 451 Heavy, please expedite your climb flight level 400. Let's see if we can get. This is always the problem. Is like sometimes they don't actually descend you. Muscat Center Air, China four five one heavy. Request flight level three zero zero. Air 
China 451 heavy descent and maintain flight level tree 40. Expect flight level tree 00. Good evening once again. Alright, so the ADIS oh. is expect ILS uh, approaches arrival runway 30 left, surface wind 080 degrees, 3 knots, visibility clear and um, clear and visible, okay, visibility okay. Uh, temperature 27, dew point 13, QNH 1008. Um, You'll next hear from me after Expect landing. ILS approach. Very good evening once again, and I'll speak to you in a short while. ADZ aircraft type on, or I advise aircraft type on first contact. Air China 451 heavy descent and maintain flight level tree zero zero. Squawk assigned transponder code until on stand. Caution possible glide slope fluctuation. Uh, Dubai VFR frequency 126.775. Tailwinds up to 10 knots reported. Advise ATC copied alpha. All right, so the ATIS recognizes Center, that. Heavy. Um, Request flight level two zero zero. I guess we're, they, for some reason, don't want us to land over Air the water. Have us come down two, that zero, way. Zero. Descend and maintain flight level tree zero zero. Expect flight level two zero zero. Air China four five one heavy. Flight level 200 Air China 451 Heavy. We're just going to get us cleared down to 10,000 that way. Muscat Center Air China 451 Heavy. Request 10,100 feet. Air China 451 Heavy descent and maintain flight level 200. Expect 10,100. All right, so CDU uh, approach page. We got our Descend thing there. CDU RNAV page. Check the ILS frequency. Air China four five one heavy. Rad nav page. There it is. All right, so we're looking for our little chart here. Bring it up for you guys. There it is. And we should have an ILS 111.3, course 299. And you can see right there, ILS GLS 111.3, course 299. So that checks out. If those VORs match anything, I don't think there are. It doesn't look like there's any VORs even in the area. That we need to worry about so those are just those numbers. Um, let's see, minimums. Looking at we're clear, so minimums are going to be right here. Going to be Cat One, 260 degree or 260 degrees, 260 feet. Right over here, minimums. Oops. Two. Whoa. Keeps going by hundreds suddenly. There we go. Ooh. 260 feet. Barrow. Perfect. Uh, we got a reference in there. Flaps 25. Uh, looks like we're going to be at 20,000. Or actually, be at 10,000. It is descending a little too quick for us. Oh no, 20,000. Okay, so we're going to be at 20,000 uh, by the time we cabin get to. Crew, please prepare the cabin for arrival. Kupma, where we need to be flight level 181, so we'll be fine there. We'll actually drop this to 10,000 in anticipation. And that'll get us to MPED. We need to be below 12,000 feet, so perfect. VNAV right on schedule. Alright, we're going to take a look at our arrival chart. Right here. Uh, the MPED. Uh, where is it? RNAV star. MPED 3 Charlie RNAV arrival. Uh, MPED 3 Charlie. 
Descend and maintain 10,100 feet. Descend and maintain 10,100 feet air, China 4 Alright, transition level is flight level 150. Airport elevation 62. At impact, we need to be at 230 knots as well, below 12,000. Uh, Delta Bravo 520, 230 knots, below 11,000. Delta Bravo 518, below 10,000. Vuton below 8,000. Delta Bravo 515 at 210 knots. Delta Bravo 514 at 6,000. Below 6,000. Continuing on. Delta Bravo 508 at 185 knots. And on in at Uldot on our approach chart, our approach plate. Max 185. And then by the time we get to Sedpo, we need to be at 2,000. So we need to be below 6,000, down to 2,000 by Sedpo. Probably by Uldot would be the best place. Alright, right, once we're landed at the airport, this is where I gotta kind of figure out where we're going. Um, where this plane would usually park. We go over here. Airports. Parts. Parking. Got our auto breaker and it goes two or three. This is standard. We should be plenty. Got a ton of runway. Minimum set. Approach briefing performed. Passenger side. Seatbelt sides on. We got our clearance. For the send. Landing lights on at 10,000, runway turnoff lights, uh, wing lights, and logo lights all at 10,000. And altimeter uh, at flight level 150. Once we're cleared, we actually are cleared to 10,000. We can actually put in our local altimeter, which is here we view. 30, no, 1008. Thinking in inches. Air, nine or five, nine or heavy traffic in sight. We're actually close to the transition anyway, so there we go. But we're cleared below the transition uh, point. We're cleared to 10,000, so we can just put in our local altimeter QH right there. Jet five, nine or have the Boeing in sight. We're going to come, be coming into Dubai from the land side. Spice Jet 5 Niner, you are 3,900 feet below your assigned altitude. Climb and maintain flight level tree, 40, keep speed, not above 230 knots. Egypt Air 9 or 5 Niner, heavy, you are 400 feet below your assigned altitude. Climb and maintain flight level tree, 0. zero. Emirates Center Air, China 451 Heavy. Request I don't know why 6, it's requesting, but with 6,100 6, feet. Not Air where we got off there. Heavy descend and maintain 10,100 feet. Expect 6,100 feet. Descend and maintain 10,100 feet. Expect 6,100 feet. Air, China 451 Heavy. Take your seats now, we're almost ready. No problem. All stations, 
flight. For safety purposes, I have left the cabin lights ready for our arrival. Please don't worry. This is a completely normal procedure, and they will be turned back on once we've arrived on the ground. Alright, so we should be below 10,000, or 12,000 right now, or a little high. I'm going to put out the speed brake so we can get our descent a little steeper so we can get to where we need to be. We do need to be at below 12,000 or a little too high. Uh, we need to be below 11,000 by the next point. It's not the perfect autopilot, or not the perfect on ATC, but it just, it doesn't use as many resources, which is a good thing. I just wish it was a little bit more, um, more intuitive, more, more options. Decimal five air China four five. Not terrible. Heavy. Actually, better. I mean, approach air China four five. I'm a little nervous about what they're going to give us for a landing. <laughs> hey, ten thousand feet landing lights on. And I wish they would. Uh, there must be a way for me to set. Uh, that, that gives the altimeter in hectopascals. Wish it was a quicker, like right there, you just boop, flip it, but I haven't found that yet. If anyone knows how to do that, leave a comment. Because it's gotta be annoying for everyone <laughs> who's not in America. Which is, it's crazy that it is set like that. I, there must be a setting. There must be a setting and it's just, I have it set to my local. There must be a way to change it. be nice if it was just regionalized because you know if you're flying from you know from Europe they're gonna be in Hector Pascals and then when you get to Hector Pascals and then you get to uh, America and then it'll switch to inches or whatever Alright, Vuitton below to 8,000, uh, Delta Bravo 515, we need to be 210 knots. Alright, we set flaps 1 also at the speed bug up, and then flaps 5 once we get the speed bug 1. Keep an eye on that for our flaps. Turn the meters off. There we go. 
All right, that is not our airport right there. That is a Sharjah International Airport, Oscar Mike Sierra Juliet. Uh, Dubai International is right behind uh, our pylon. There it is. We'll be landing on the left, right? Yeah, left runway. We'll have a three knot tailwind. Because we have that three knot tailwind, we'll actually we'll actually only put we'll only add two for our V target here. We'll go one four nine for our target speed. Because usually you do plus five. It seems to be like the standard. But that's if you have a headwind. Actually you might actually want to take off two or three. Might well actually our target speed might actually be four one four or actually. Alright, let's go flaps one. about the checklist let's go through the checklist here uh, descent recall checked auto brake set landing data v ref flaps 25 147 set minimums 260 barrel approach briefing complete checklist complete and approach checklist altimeters are set next one's gonna be landing Approach Air China 451 Heavy. Request 2,100 feet. I should just let see it, see where it's gonna, what they're gonna give me, actually. The flaps five. I don't know why it's going all the way down there. I think we need to go manual speed here. Uh, how do I do the? Alright, then Delta Bravo 508, we're going to be at 185, and then once we hit 185, so here we go, climb and maintain 12,000, no. Oh, they just changed us, okay. Climb and maintain 12,000 feet, keep speed not above 185 knots, expect ILS runway 12 left approach via re-rec transition, cleared to re-rec Air China 451 heavy. Heading. Heading. Alright, we're going to reset, we're going to go out. Okay, so they just changed it on. This is the problem is they don't uh, clear us at the right point. Now we're at 6,000 feet, and they actually want us at 10, or at 12. So that is the drawback of the of this ATC is that's a lot too slow, <laughs> way too slow. So ILS, well left, rear rack transition. Okay, execute. Got our legs page here. Get out to rear rack. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, L nav. Why would I do that? Why would I go back up to 12,000 when I sh probably shouldn't be at 12,000? So, the wind... It was quite obvious that they were going to give us this approach because of the wind, but... Also, I don't know why they're making us go out so far. Alright, so let's go back in, make sure we have our proper things, 110.1, course 119, 
Again, we're capturing the glide slope at 2,000 feet. Minimum is 212 or 223 this time. And we'll adjust that. Alright, 223 set. Hey, okay, rear Rick, we need to be. I don't know why they want us to climb the 12,000s, considering that we're going to. Air China 451 Heavy would like ILS runway 12 left approach vectors to final. Considering rear Rick, we need to be at 2,000. Okay, heavy, we need to be at 2,000. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors ILS runway 12 right, so left I'm going to put in 2,000 here. That Maintain is the present clearance. heading and altitude. Expect vectors ILS runway 12 left approach Air China 451 heavy. Okay, let's get down to 185. On this heading, we got this other plane going out here instead of cutting in and then trying to make that turn overshooting, kind of make a more square this off. Give ourselves a downwind right now. Is it downwind? Yeah, downwind. Uh, downwind, then we'll make a base into rear wreck. All right, let's go flaps five. And they're just going to be I'm not going up to 12,000 because Rurik is 2,000 there's no reason for me to climb from where I'm at literally right there okay we got some traffic a lot of traffic actually And again, kind of the frustrating thing is that they kind of do that. They give you that clearance way too late. And it's kind of, you got to you got to almost assume, you got to look at the winds and go, okay, they're going to give me those. Another plane. They're not very good at a clearance either. Because the ATC talks to these other planes, but doesn't really control them like FS HUD ATC does. So you're kind of just flying with a bunch of other planes. And they're pro pretty much just going to keep complaining about us. This guy's going to overtake us. Approach Air China 451 Heavy requesting vector to next waypoint. Air China 451 Heavy, turn right heading 005. Turn right heading 005 Air China 451 Heavy. I guess that's why they want us to climb to 12,000 because they don't actually want us to come right there right now. Could be the possibility.
how there's like suddenly a bunch of planes just kind of pop into existence sometimes. Approach Air China 451 Heavy requesting vector to next waypoint. Air China 451 Heavy, turn right heading 005. Turn right heading 005 Air China 451 Heavy. Why? Why do I have to go away? Why can't I fly to the airport? Turn base. I'm kind of taking this into our own hands. I, I guess what I could do is I could actually follow what ATC is saying and see how good they do. I just have a feeling they won't do a good job. We'll just fly us around in circles. So we're gonna turn here. There we go. feet. Tower on 118.75 Air China 451 Heavy. Dubai Tower Air China 451 Heavy 27 miles northwest inbound ILS runway 12 left approach. Air China 451 Heavy Dubai Tower. Altimeter 29er decimal 751078 at 4. Cleared ILS runway 12 left approach. Cleared ILS runway 12 left approach Air China 451 Heavy. Oops. Dubai Tower Sky Dubai 157014 miles northwest inbound ILS runway 12 left approach. Where did this guy come from? Sky Dubai 157. Someone's already Dubai Tower. Oh, someone always gets in my way. Like that other guy that we were following is way up there, and this guy just came. Yep, I'm coming in now. That's the thing, they don't actually control the traffic, so it's. A little sketchy. Cleared ILS runway one two left approach Sky Dubai one five seven zero.
Tower Spice Jet 5 Niner 1 5 miles northwest inbound ILS runway 1 2 left approach. Spice Jet 5 Niner Dubai Tower. Altimeter 2 Niner Decimal 7 5 wind 0 7 8 at No way to actually tune into the ATIS because it just automatically controls your radio. So that's another problem. And I wonder how you would. Yeah. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. We just got traffic all over us. Because again, there's no spacing because these the AI planes are not controlled at, in any way which is why you get better frame rate because the CPU is not doing as much work but ATC is just kind of talking and there's no clearance so like this guy's just gonna overtake me unless I speed up Which is of course very frustrating that you have ATC in the game but you don't have a way for the ATC to control planes that are in the game. Like they give them clearance and stuff and but they don't do any um actual spacing. Pakistan two one three, heavy contact ground on one two one decimal six five. Clear to land runway one two left sky, Dubai one five seven zero. Passing up these other planes. Dubai Tower Emirates 607 heavy 15 miles northwest inbound ILS runway 12 left approach. Emirates 607 heavy Dubai Tower. Altimeter 29 or decimal 761078 at 4. Cleared ILS runway 12 left approach. Flaps 20. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? I'm back. 
aggressive uh, Sky Dubai, one, five, seven, adjusting zero, of the uh, chorus there. I guess we had to get on left. We were kind of on the... <laughs> nice little step over there, isn't it? Like, okay, Arthur. Spicejet 59er, follow the Boeing on the runway. Wind 078 at 4. Clear to land runway 1 2 left. just going to be bobbing and weaving here coming in. Sky Dubai 1570, contact ground on 118 decimal tree 5. Clear to land runway 1 2 left, Spicejet 59er. Any gear down? 118 decimal tree 5 sky dubai 1570 goodbye landing here just stop freaking out here and just get on the localizer Swimming right now. There we go. Are you on it? China 451 Heavy. Okay, so we're going to be going over here to Terminal 1. Egypt Air 9R10, number 2 for landing. Follow the on final. Wind 078 at 4. Clear to land runway 1 2 left. Spice Jet 5, 9 exit runway when able. Well, this thing picked up speed when I a little bit of throttle and it just picked up a ton of speed. Air China 451 Heavy, go around. Spice Jet 59er contact ground on 121 decimal 65. Boeing. 
Deep, you going? Dubai Ground Air China 451 Heavy request taxi to the gate. Air China 451 Heavy taxi to gate Charlie 6 Street using taxiway. Now, I'm not sure what our frames would be if I was using FS Hide. We're kind of at 20 frames. Maybe we'd be down in the tens. I don't know. Taxiing to gate Charlie 6 Tree via taxiway Mike Mike 10 Bravo cross runway 12 right Kilo 7 Kilo Whiskey Uniform Yankee 1 Yankee Juliet 1 Air right, China Charlie 4, 5, 6 1 Tree. We still do have GSX, so. Spice Jet 5 Niner, hold position, caution, the departing Boeing. We're gonna follow me to help us. Dubai Ground Emirates 772 Heavy requesting pushback. Alright, Charlie 6 3 is all the way over at a Concourse D, which doesn't make sense, but that's what it is. Spice Jet Look at the chart. There's 6 3. We are over here. Uh, we got uh, Mike, Mike 10 Bravo. Cross runway 12 right. Let's see. Kilo 7. Kilo. And then we're looking for whiskey. Hard to see. Really hard to see where whiskey is. I don't see it. Always oh, whiskey. So we're actually right there. Whiskey Zulu. I'm assuming. Uh, no uniform. Where the heck? Okay, all the way over here. Uniform. Yankee one. I'm guessing Juliet one. Any right there? Right there. Okay. Here we go. I think we got it. Okay, so there's Mike 10 Bravo. Dubai ground Emirates 772 heavy with Bravo ready to taxi IFR. Emirates 772 heavy taxi to and hold short of runway 12 right using taxiway Zulu Zulu 3 Kilo Kilo 1. Contact tower on 119 or decimal 55 when ready. Where are you taking me? <laughs> Spice Jet 5 uh, Niner, continue taxi. Spice Jet 5 Niner, hold position, caution, the departing Airbus. Yeah, so remember how I was worried if we, we were going to be landing at like 5 o'clock? Yeah, here it is, 7 o'clock. So that's how it always goes, is like with these long hauls, it's like you could easily be, you could easily, depending on the wind, be way shorter than you were planning or way longer. Alright, Kilo 7. Really hard to see. Whiskey. Dubai Ground Emirates 607 Heavy request taxi to the gate. Emirates 607 Heavy taxi to gate Charlie 61 via taxiway Mike Lima for Kilo Zulu 7 Zulu. Yes, our frame rates are kind of. Basically around the same area they would be if you're using FS hot ATC. But it seems smoother. Doesn't seem as choppy despite the lower frames. I don't know if that's because it's night or what it is. And there's technically, I think, more planes being injected by FS LTL. Emirates 
taxi, two, and hold short of runway one, two, right by a taxiway Zulu Zulu one five kilo kilo one. Contact tower on one one nine or decimal five five when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway one two right using taxiway Zulu Zulu one five kilo kilo one Emirates six two four heavy. Roger, Emirates, tree, tree, eight heavy. Dubai, ground, Emirates, five, tree, zero heavy, requesting pushback. Emirates, five, tree, zero heavy, pushback. Request yeah, I think if I had this many planes, usually with episode, I think there's a lot less planes being inserted. Um, because I've turned down how many get inserted because if I was inserting as many as are probably in here right now It seems like every gates almost full um, We probably get way fewer frames Oh, Yeah, we might do I mean do you, there's a few few things I don't like about the uh, Microsoft flight simulator ATC I think what we got to do with it is we just have to pay attention to where the wind is and We just have to assume they're going to give us uh, the proper runways for the wind even though the ATIS the ATIS were saying we're going to land with Tailwind, which is kind of weird. Um, but lots of activity here in Dubai. Uh, doing pretty well. I mean, not great with separation or anything. Um, but FSI ATC struggles with that as well. So I think I might... Might stick with using uh, this ATC for a while. Let's give it a try, see how... It performs. I want to see, I'm really curious to see if we can get better frame rates at the American airports. I mean, again, I think if we were using FSI to ATC right now, we'd be getting garbage frames here at Dubai because there's so much traffic and it's such a big airport. Uh, whereas I'm getting, gar I'm getting these kind of frame rates at Washington, D.C., at Columbus, Ohio, which is a small airport and is it, there's not even custom buildings or anything. And I'm getting bad. So, like, the U.S. is just hits another way and FSOD ACC just uses so much computing power to control all the planes in the sky uh, so the ATC like when they give them actual instructions they follow them but again separation is still a struggle and we got a China Eastern Taxiway. It'd be better to be on taxiway Julia. You see that? Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, let's go over there. The uniform is a little. The uniform's too close to the. Uh, <laughs> too close to the gates. Especially with our wingspan. said most of the time when I go to big airports like this I'm getting bad frames now it might be the nature of whoa 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 what the heck just happened there what just happened there what just happened there <laughs> why did it do that <laughs> what just happened there it's like a, like something like pushed me. What just? Wow! It's got body slammed into the. Oh. Nice. And according to SLC self loading cargo, my uh, plane just crashed. It's like yeah, no crap. I just got pile drived into a. Oh well, that kind of sucks. Luckily, I luckily I don't need that uh, self loading cargo for the time tracking because I didn't do any time acceleration. That I don't think it gave me anything. Good. Okay, here's gate. Enjoy flying this fl this plane. I mean, we're gonna be 
I'm going to be trying to get a few more of these long hauls in, you know, maybe some longer ones. Definitely will be doing six, seven, eight hour flights like this, some more, um, on the days when I'm, you know, try to get in a shorter flight early and then when I have to, uh, get out of the house for the day, we can, uh, do some of these long hauls, go to some, just go to different places, city pairs that we haven't done yet. All right, I like how the gate just came out automatically, cool. Uh, turn off taxi lights, taxi lights, right, off. All right. After landing, runway, turn off lights, da -da -da, taxi lights. We did all this, wing lights can come off. Uh, speed brake down, flaps up, transponder, transponder. But now we're gonna go to standby, because we didn't flip that. Flaps up, APU start then on. Anti-ice is required, we're at the weather radar. Weather radar is off. Parking brake set. Fuel control switch is cut off. Passenger sign, seatbelt sign. Off. Electric hydraulic pumps off. Engine hydraulic pumps primary. Oh, sorry. Electric ones are these ones. Uh, IRS selectors off. FD door power. That off. Uh, fuel pumps off. Engine anti ice auto. Beacon off. Flight directors off. Transponder standby. External power. Let's get some external power. Additional services. Quest GPU. All position Spice Jet Five Niner. And let's start the dis D boarding process. Okay. Dubai Ground Emirates. Shut down checklist. Hydraulic panel set, fuel pumps off, flaps up, parking brake set, fuel control switches cut off, rather weather radar off. Next flight, we'll try to find something out of Dubai. Got to fly to this airport. I think maybe we'll kind of do some flights in and out of Dubai for a while. Do long hauls, maybe. Kind of make it a hub. See what stuff comes in and out around that seven, eight, nine hour range. Beautiful. And again, for an airport this size, performs very well. And again, I don't know if that's just using the in-game ATC with FSLTL versus using FSLTL and FSHUD ATC. Yeah, it's kind of cool to fly the bigger planes. I mean, the funny thing is, you look at our plane, it looks so small. I mean, this must be a 10 or something, or a or 50 or something. Look, our, our plane looks tiny compared to these guys around us. And yet, if we would jump into our 737, which we usually fly, it'd be tiny compared to what we just flew. Flight. Took out, took off out of Chongqing. And then took the opposite runway, but we didn't follow that flight plan. Position, 
accounts of Guizhou, Yunnan, to Burma, Bangladesh, right across the middle of India. We have to get some flights into India. I know we got some nice log calls over there. Out of Europe for sure. Uh, and then you can see our kind of our plan was coming this way and kind of had to change that up, but I think we made it do. That was actually a pretty nice base that we created there. Just a little bit to the, the right. Landing rate, not bad at all. 292 feet per minute. And in a plane this big, that's really nice. And I'm typically hitting that, especially when we're with Ryanair, but even Southwest, we're typically right around that mark. Eight hours block time, seven and a half hours flight time, exactly on the dot what we were planning. Amazing. Simply amazing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, simply amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't record that for my Star Alliance virtual. Uh, but next one, we'll make sure we get the get it actually recording. But pretty amazing that we're right on the dot. Basically, with the let's see what it's in brief at. Sim brief said eight hours and nine minutes block time, so we're seven minutes shorter actually. Air time seven hours and forty one minutes. So we did actually shave about six seven minutes off of the whole flight. So there you go. That that's a win. I thought it was going to take a lot shorter the way it was going, and end up taking just about just about where it should have been, I guess. I pop. That's a pretty cool little. Degree. I love. I just love these tails. Some of these are really cool. That's another thing I'm going to be trying to do is I'm going to just be trying to fly different airlines and maybe do a few legs from those airlines. Um, and somewhere in here we do need to knock out a few more of our world tour flights to finish up our world tour. We got like five, six to go, and then. But we're kind of going to be retouring the world just kind of more of a random, random way here going forward. Um, between Southwest, Ryanair, Star Alliance, I might even, there's, I think there's two other ones that are one world and the other, you know, basically covers every airline, so I can just be kind of technically getting tracked and racking up points or whatever, for what it's worth, you know, or finding routes a little bit easier than just searching on the internet for stuff. It's a cool way. There you go, 787-9 Dreamliner, Air China, Chongqing, uh, Sichuan province to Dubai United Arab Emirates Let's secure the plane for the night I believe local time it is Well UTC it's 1905 705 Zulu 7.05 p.m. Zulu I think local We can kind of cheat here and just pop open our time here local time 11.05 p.m. So definitely want to get to the hotel and get rested up and spend a few days here in Dubai and then we'll do the return flight. Possibly do the return flight. We'll see. Or we'll probably just do the return flight. Uh, yes, we do want to deboard the crew. Let's secure the plane. Emergency lights. You can find where these are. Emergency lights. Da, da, da. It's a little bit harder when you're kind of looking for it not just going up and down. Emergency lights off. Packs lower recirculating fan. EFB off. APU external power as required. Uh, we'll turn off the APU. Alright, IRS off. Emergency lights off. Packs off. A lot of things that we didn't turn off into the security position. We'll just do that right now. I like how I get a friend request, a friend, a friend, a friend request, right as I uh, finish to turn off the battery. Very interesting. Okay. There go the pilots. Chinese 
after he's taken off. Alright, so next stream will be possibly Tuesday night. We'll probably do a Southwest flight Tuesday night if we can. And then uh, Wednesday morning we'll maybe do another Southwest flight or probably do the start of a long haul because I do have my flight training at 9 on Wednesday morning. So look for something Tuesday evening and obviously Wednesday morning we'll probably do a long haul. So until then. Whoa, what's, what, 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 what is playing in the background here? Oh, that makes sense. Alright, until then, <laughs> happy flying and take care.